Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi vahdeh. Ve salatu ve selamu ala men la nebiyye ba'deh. Eşhedü en la ilahe illallahu vahdehu la şerike leh. Ve eşhedü enne Muhammeden abduhu ve rasuluh. Sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve sellem tesliman mezida. Ama ba'd. Esselamu aleyküm ve rahmetullahi ve barakatuh. Jazakumullahu khayrun kathira for uh, attending once again another program. Uh, which Marcus Sunnah Leicester uh, proudly presents, along with uh, all of us at uh, this masjid, Masjid al Quba in Leicester, who are uh, gladly opening their doors for uh, scholars to uh, visit and, and uh, share their knowledge with us, and also the students of knowledge and the local uh, du'at as well. Alhamdulillah. Um, this program today, inshallah, will be delivered by our respected brother al akh al-Fadil, Ali Hassan Khan, who is, uh, uh, mashallah, an influential character and somebody who uh, has uh, been very active in uh, the da'wah. Just to give you a little background about him, uh, first of all, he was born in Pakistan and he was raised in France. Uh, he currently resides in the UK and uh, from his teachers where he studied in Pakistan are Sheikh Thanaullah Madani, who is one of the students of Sheikh Al-Albani, Sheikh Ibn Baz and others, uh, Sheikh Shafiq Al-Rahman Madani, uh, from whom he studied Sunan Al-Tirmidhi, uh, Sheikh Ramadan Al-Salafi, and uh, many others from the senior scholars of Pakistan from whom he studied uh, the senior books, the, the major books of Hadith and uh, uh, many books from all of the Islamic sciences. Uh, the brother has, mashallah, authored uh, various books uh, as well on different topics, uh, including uh, translating works. For example, he translated Al Jawab Al Bahir of uh, Sheikh Al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, which is uh, a fatwa he wrote. It was actually the fatwa he wrote which uh, landed Sheikh Al Islam in prison, the same stretch in prison uh, from which he passed away. Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Um, so this will be the talk, insha'Allah. Uh, the topic is uh, titled, Where is Allah? Or the issue of, Where is Allah? The talk will be delivered in two parts, starting today and uh, completed next month, insha'Allah ta'ala. And the uh, talk will uh, discuss the importance of this topic, the relevance of it, and why we need to discuss it. Because it's a, to it's a topic which is often very misunderstood and not only misunderstood but people question the importance of talking about it so this inshallah will be uh, explained and uh, critical answers and misconceptions will be answered and cleared up with Allahi ta'ala and uh, there will be a short time after the talk for questions and answers um, however we, we are limiting questions and answers to written in the written format only um, so there'll be a small time afterwards, inshallah, for that. And there are pens and papers available to the brothers and the sisters as well. And uh, with that, inshallah, uh, I hand over to our, our brother, inshallah, to, to begin the talk. Um, I would ask uh, the brothers to be patient for the uh, questions and answers and only limit, the, limit your questions to those which are relevant and beneficial, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. Barakallahu feekum. Inshallah, we'll uh, begin. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهدي الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد دي براذر سيسترز بسيكلي أم غنى تو لكتشر عن ذا توبيك وارز الله ذيس لكتشر ويل بي دايركت رفيتيشن أوف ذا لكتشر ديليفرد باي ديوباندي تبليغي Molana uh, Mumtazul Haq, who is an uh, Imam in London, and his lecture has been quite shocking on YouTube. Lots of brothers have requested me to give a detailed answer to it. But basically, it's everybody, uh, uh, I mean, who's, who's denying Allah being above the Arsh, but it is specific to him. Because some people deny Allah being upon the Arsh, but they say he's neither upon the Arsh nor on the earth. But the Deobandi Mumtazul Haq, he said Allah's everywhere, you see. And he brought many uh, arguments for it, and we will refute them. But the, re but the arguments basically behind... 
I mean, the arguments and the creed he basically propagated was the creed of Wahdatul Wujud. So that is why my lecture is going to be divided on two topics. It's going to be first a direct refutation of his arguments with the quotes from the Imams of the Salaf. You see on the right side, Sahel Bukhari, Tirmizi, and all the other books of the Salaf, Sunan Abu Dawud, Sunan Ibn Majah, about what they said where Allah is. And then we're going to have also a refutation of his arguments. I mean, the, the, the tafsir of the Quran, the strange tafsir of the Quran he did. And secondly, we're going to speak about the creed of Wahdatul Wujud because the two topics are interlinked. The creed, what is the creed of Wahdatul Wujud? How it is present in the books of the Deobandi elders? How it is present in Fusus al Hikam of uh, Ibn Arabi? And I have Fusus al Hikam with two of his explanations. So basically, I mean, some of the brothers, one of the brother who, who was formerly a Deobandi, and he, he spoke a little bit about, uh, about this to, um, he used to be former Deobandi, then he, mashallah, became uh, Alul Hadith. He spoke to Mumtazul Haq also about the topic of Wahdatul Wujud Ibn Arabi, and he said, yeah, the creed of Wahdatul Wujud is right, uh, and uh, Ibn Arabi is a wali, and there's no problem. Then he asked him if he, was, he wanted to debate on the book of Fusus al-Hikam. If you say it is the truth, Fusus al-Hikam, why you don't uh, uh, want to debate it publicly in front of the people what's in this book that uh, Pharaoh will die, the Paniman, the people who worship the car, the people who worship idols, they only worship Allah. Why you don't want to debate about it and open these books publicly and see what uh, argumentation. But he refused basically saying there's no point this and that. So basically the two topics are interlinked. Brother Zulfika sent me an email and he sent it to me because some of the Deobandis know that they say, they're going to say, we don't believe Allah is present everywhere. So the books I'm bringing from them are from the greatest authorities. You see, they're not small Molanas or Molvis who have a masjid corners. They're from the, the biggest elders, you see. Uh, Imdadullah Makiya, Ashraf Ali Tanvi, uh, Rashid Ahmad Gangui, who are the main imams of the Deobandi group. And then Ibn Arabi, who's the main caller to hit. You see, they've got many other callers like Al Halaj, Abdel Karim, Jili, many others. But uh, I'm mainly going go to go quote today uh, Ibn Arabi. So, inshallah, if I have time today, I'll also mention the second part, which is going to be about uh, Wahdatul Wujud. If there's few time, we can do it in another lecture. So, basically, Zulfika sent me an email. And this is how they deceive, because you'll understand in the lecture about Wahdatul Wujud, they have a Batini religion. Batini means secretive. In front of you, they're going to say something in their books or in their Khanqa. Khanqa is the special place of worship the Sufi have in Arabic is Zawiyah. So they're going to have a speak, speech in the masjid, and they're going to have another speech in the Khanqa or Zawiyah, whatever. And some of the spe speech is, they're going to say for the layman, and some is going to be for the khawas, for the elite. So that's how they, these people do, they're very, they're ba botany, they have uh, hidden and esor uh, esoteric knowledge, that's how they call it. So this fatwa, I'm gonna just in the introduction, just mention it. It's coming from uh, Darulum Deoban, which is the madrasa in India. Uh, Darulifta uh, at Deoban.org. If you go on the fatwa section and you tie fatwa number 32,642, you'll come to this fatwa. It's going to be in Urdu. I'm just going to read it in Urdu, then put it in English first. So, uh, 32642, fatwa. Anybody can Google the webpage, daruliftadioban.org, and go on it and read. 32642. So, the person uh, asked them, Kya Allah hai? So, is Allah the pure, uh, present in every place is. Second question, is Allah the pure at every time present in every place is? And is Allah the pure? Her cheese me mojude, present in everything, not only in every place is, but in everything. And the answer from the muftis of the, the Daru Lifta, Daru Ulum Deoband, which is their main authority of the Deobandi school. Some people can say, well, they cannot deny this. This is the main authority. <coughs> they say, about the first question, Jiha, Allah ta'ala har jaga mojuda. Yes, Allah is present everywhere. Second answer, Jiha, eki vakt me har jaga mojuda. Yes, at the same time, he is present in every places. And the answer to the third question, Allah ta'ala har cheez me mojuda. 
اللہ تعالیٰ از پریزنٹ ان ایوری سنگ یہ تمام امور قرآن آیا سے ثابت ہیں آل دس میٹرز آر پروون بائی دا قرآن سو دس از دا بات ان ریلیجن اینڈ وی گن ہیو مینی آف دا فردر کوٹس اینڈ شو So some people, they might say, oh, but we don't have a Batini religion, we're not Shia, we don't have secretive uh, uh, teachings, we tell only to our people and we hide it. Okay, this is the book Irshad al-Muluk. It's written by Rashid Ahmad Gangui, who is the second more greatest scholar uh, uh, of the Deobandi after Qasim Nanudvi. It's been translated by themselves, Majid Sulama of South Africa, by the Tablighis. Uh, and it's a book written by uh, Rashid Ahmed Gangui. Like I said, he's considered as the second imam of the Deobandis after um, Qasim Nanotvi. He wrote this book into Farsi and Ashik al Merati put it in Urdu and then it was translated into English. So in this book, they quote a strange hadith attributed to Ali radiallahu anhu, but it, uh, I'm telling you it's a fake hadith. On page 59, He saying Rasulullah sallallahu taught me 70 such avenues of knowledge we did not indicate to others meaning I was taught 70 branches of knowledge only me he didn't teach it to others it's a fake hadith so after he carries on saying certain knowledge has not been revealed even to the khawas meaning the particular people so special knowledge was awarded to only the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so they're saying the prophet sallallahu received the knowledge and he only kept it to him he didn't give it to anyone no one in the entire creation has been informed of such exclusive knowledge and then they quote other for false hadith and then they said there are many different stages of knowledge how could it be proper for anyone to believe that he has encompassed all knowledge and then they carry on so basically they quote this hadith and they say similarly some of the knowledge of the rasul and bo- in general is both for the elite and the lay laity awam they say some of his knowledge is for the layman and for the khawas the elite the knowledge of the commands the prohibition you see the knowledge of the sharia the fiqh hadith how you should pray what is haram what is halal on the other hand some of his knowledge is exclusively for the khawas hence sahib sir they call huzaifa ibn yaman you see the the process of secret was instructed in such knowledge and this is also hazrat ali and basically the the, the matters the professor told to hazefa was relating the tribulations or, or the fightings between the muslim it wasn't about you see the knowledge of tawhid or the knowledge of aqida so basically they are saying that they among the teachings of the prophet so some they divided into two one is for the layman and one is for the khawas So anybody, they can't say we don't have a bat in a religion. This is recorded in their books. They have fake hadith about this. And they have many other sayings in the book of Sufis. I'm going to quote Abdurrahman al-Jami, who's a Naqshabandi scholar. Because when Ibn Arabi says, the Prophet Sallallahu said, I, I, there was a house which is, you know the famous hadith, there was a house which is completed. I'm only the last brick to complete it. And they said, the last of the saint, Ibn Arabi says, he saw two bricks. And... Then Abdurrahman Jami explained, he said, because the, the Khatimul Awliya, the last of the saints, his mission is to disclose these secrets. While the Prophet's mission was not, obviously he knew these hidden secrets, but his mission was to hide them and only to disclose the, the, the Sharia. While the Haqiqah, the secret teachings, it is the aim of the Awliya to teach them. So this is Abdurrahman Naqshabandi. And the Tablighis, they're also Naqshabandi and Chistis. He's a big reference for them. We're going to see in his explanation of uh, Fusus al-Haikam, he's going to say that the prophets, they know this occurred, but that it is not their mission. They just make some hints to Wahdat al-Wujud, which is the unity of existence. We're going to see it's basically, they said there's one existence and the human, the creation is only manifestation. It's not an existence on its own. It's only a reflection in the mirror, a shadow. You, they're going to say, you don't exist, you only think you exist, but actually, it's only Allah's existence there. So basically, I'm just starting with this. It's a Batini creed, you see. They, this Batini creed started at the time of the Sahaba, when some of the, those who did Ghulu in Ali, you see, they exaggerated in Ali, they started to, go, to worship Ali and consider him as a divinity. Then Ali, like in Sahih Bukhari, he burned them alive. And Ibn Abbas said, Oh, he should have killed them, the Zanadiqah, those who say Ali is God. 
But he shouldn't have uh, burned them because it's Allah's exclusive punishment. Only Allah can punish with the fire. So at this time, the fitna of these people, the Batini, the Shia, it started. They started to consider that Allah was present in Ali. But then it carried on in this region of Iraq. You see Khorasan, um, all this Iraq and modern day Iran. That's where the Batini mission started. It, it, it mixed up. Greek philosophy with the, the Majus and so other religions philosophy and they build up the Batinim religion after. Not only the Shia like the 12 Imamids, you, you have the Ismaili Shia like, or the Alawi like in Syria that they, they, they have an esoteric, they say we don't believe in Sharia, we have our own system. And, and even then it came among those who call themselves Sunnis, but it came in the philosophers through Ibn Sina, who was a Batini, Ikhwan Asafa were Batinis. They mixed up the concept of Plato and Aristotle and, uh, and all these different teachings, and they made up this Mazhab of Wahdatul Wujud. The first one to proclaim it publicly was Mansur ibn Hussein al Hallaj, who said, An al Haq, I am the truth. And he was killed uh, around 300 years by. All the scholars, they judged him, they asked him question, maybe he's crazy. They've seen he's not crazy. He really believed in, in, in this uh, stuff. So they killed him. And they, the Sufis, they considered him as a martyr because he disclosed this secret and he died for it. And what is funny, in his Tawasin, which has been translated into English, he says, he says, my master are Fir'aun and Iblis. They did not recant. I'm not going to recant from saying an al-Haq. I'm ready to die for it. So someone who's saying, my master is Iblis and Fir'aun, he is considered by the Sufi as the martyr of the saint, one of the greatest authority. So Al-Halaj was upon this mother. Many other Sufi sects ad adopted these teachings in the different Turuq Sufiya. And the one who exposed it the mo most is Ibn Arabi. He clearly, and that's why even the Hana many Hanafi scholars, like Mullah Ali Qari, Badrud, Aini, Aladdin Bukhari, they said, Fusus al-Hikam, is a book full of shirk, and I'm going to quote lots of quotes from Mullah Ali Qari, who wasn't a Salafi scholar, he was a Hanafi Maturidi scholar, uh, like Sa'at Aftazani as well. They said this is pure kufr. So basically, one has to understand that the Brailvi and Deobandi school of thought, they're only propagating these Batini teachings, secretive teachings, and they are propagating the school of Muhyiddin ibn Arabi. There are only two facets of the same school. They have different interpretation. Uh, like in my books about the Deobandi and the Tablighi Jamaat, I've shown that each, whether it is Wahdatul Wujud, or they believe that the Ghaz, Qut Abdal, they control and regulate the universe, or they believe in Nur Muhammadi, they all say, uh, Ashraf Ali Tanvi and others, when they mention the Qut Abdal, they say Ibn Arabi said this on that pages. Ahmad Raza Khan from the Brailvi school, when he mentioned Wahdatul Wujud or his belief in the Ghaz, he also says Ibn Arabi said this about the Ghaz. He said this in his book, Manzil al Qut. So basically, one has to understand many of the Turuk of the Sufi after, they are propagating the same school and they're propagating the same teachings. Like the next Shabandis, we're going to see Abdul Rahman al Jami, the, the Shadilis, and others, they are all propagating the same stuff, which is the creed of Wahdatul Wujud. And they're even saying it. You see, the Deobandi in their book, Muhannad al Mufannad, they have a concept that I've developed in my book. It is Nur Muhammadi. You see, this is a, a common belief to many Sufis and Brailvis, Deobandis. They said the, pro, the first thing Allah created was the light of the Prophet. And from the emanation phase of this light, all the rest of the creation uh, uh, came into existence. And this, uh, this is fabricated, even the Sufi scholars they say it's fabricated, they attribute it to Musannaf ibn Abdel Razak, and up to today they haven't found any authentic manuscript, none of the scholars of the Salaf uh, who, who had manuscripts of Musannaf ibn um, Abdel Razak, they quoted it. Even in nowadays, the Brailvis try to uh, fabricate a, f a false manuscript, but when the scholar examined it, they even did scientific research on it, they say it's a recent one, and they found many false in it, showing it was fabricated. So the Alul Hadith, they all win. Whenever someone fabricates Hadith, they're always going to detect it. So, I mean, the Deobandi, one of the previous director of Dar Ulum Deoband, he has a book called Aftab Muhammadi. In it, he's saying the concept of Nur Muhammadi, and they say that the prophet's uh, prophethood 
is zati. They, they invented this concept and they say Muhammad al Mufanad. He said, Our concept of Nur Muhammadi and of uh, this um, concept of a prophethood is taken from, not from the Salaf, it is taken from the Kashf of Ibn Arabi and others. They say so matters based on unveiling dreams and whatever. And they say, like um, uh, the former director of um, Darul Umdeman in his book Aftab, they're saying like the sun, he, he is the, uh, the, the true uh, star. All the other stars in the universe take their light from the sun. They said they don't have their own lights. And he said, likewise, the prophet, prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he was a prophet on his own. His prophethood was Zati. And the prophethood of the other prophets, Ibrahim Alayhi Salaam, Isa and Nuh, Dawood, it was taken from the prophet, uh, prophethood by emanation. It is all about in the creed concept in Ibn Sina, Greek philosophy. It has nothing to do uh, with uh, any uh, this reflection. So they say the light of the prophethood reflected in the other prophet and they became prophet. And they say this has nothing to do in the Salaf speech. This is taken from Ibn Arabi's Kashf. And there is a book in English, Mystical Astrology According to Ibn Arabi, uh, written by Titus Bukhar, who is a specialist of Ibn Arabi and all this stuff. And he's saying in it, he said, but scientifically, this is false. Because at that time, Ibn Arabi didn't have science. The other stars, they don't take their lights from the prophet, uh, from the sun. They have their own lights. So he, say, he said, you see, like the same stuff that Deobandi said in his book after Muhammadi, that uh, the sun is, the, 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 though it's not the biggest star, he has the, his light on his own, and the other star take the light from him. But now even, I mean, the specialists uh, specialist of Sufism, they say, okay, this is against science, but is, is it esoterical knowledge? So it is still truth. At least you should acknowledge that this cash is false. I mean, if it goes against science, it's like the Christians. I mean, you, the stuff in your Bible that the day and night was created before um, uh, the sun and the moon. When you know it, it's against the science, you should say the cash of Ibn Arabi is false. Actually, it's the cash of Shaitan. It's Shaitan revealing him this kind of stuff that the prophet of all other prophets is taken from the emanation of the prophet. It's all a fabricated religion. And still it goes against science. They're still propagated. This is esoterical knowledge. You cannot understand it. It's quite funny to read such kind of books, but uh, it's a Muhyiddin ibn Arabi a film of the sun, the heart of the world, that it communicates lights to all other stars, including the fixed star, and it is itself is illuminated by the re direct and incessant irradiation of the divine revelation. So this concept, even the Deobandi, when they write it, they say it's taken from the Keshf of Ibn Arabi. And this Keshf goes against science. So any person of reason, they should say, look, we should stop teaching this uh, kind of uh, uh, Batini esoteric knowledge that even goes against, it's not present in the book of the Salaf. And it goes against uh, science and it goes against Quran, Hadith, and, and it is a Batini Shia knowledge. Uh, sh Basically, the Shia in the book say that the Prophet was created from light and then the light went on to the twelve, the descendants, and it is present in the light. So basically, it is a Shia Batini teaching. Only Ibn Arabi was the first to bring the Hadith of Jabir. Before him, 500 years, none of the scholars said Allah first created the light of the Prophet, then it, uh, uh, from it, the creation. So all of this is interconnected. It is, like I've quoted before, hidden teachings, esoterical teachings, based on cash, zok, taste, and whatever. So this is just an introduction to the topic. And uh, like I've said before, inshallah, for the Wahdatul Wujud, I've got their quotes about Firon, dying up an Iman, uh, uh, the people who worship the idols, people of Nuh, Ibn Arabi said they will go, they will be not drawn in the ocean and be punished, but they will be drawn in Allah's unicity. Fi bahr ahadiyati. La. Meaning they will be, an, uh, and the, explain, uh, the people who explain this, they didn't say, oh, we don't understand. They say, yeah, the people who, who worship idols, like uh, uh, Abdul Ghani Nablusi, who's a Hanafi scholar, Abdul uh, Jami, who's a Naqshabandi scholar, they say, yes, the people who worship idols, they will be drawn in Allah's unicity, in, in, in the ocean of Allah's knowledge, in the ocean of Allah's um, ahadiyah, pure unicity. And likewise, they say for the people who worship the calf, the Jews who followed Samiri and worship the calves, they said they only worshiped Allah. And then they've got many explanations and they, 
I mean, they've got so much stuff in their books. I mean, they even describe Iblis as a believer, Pharaoh as a believer, Iblis will be forgiven. Uh, and like Halaj said, I mean, Iblis and Pharaoh are my masters, are my teachers. So this is the Batini teachings, and they're not ready to debate about these books. But we will have to present it to the layman so they know the reality of the topic and the importance of the topic, why the Salaf insisted on saying Allah is above the harsh. He's not everywhere. And he's not present in everything. So this is why. I'm going to start now the, the section of, uh, on where is Allah. So basically, the Deoban de Mumtaz al Haqi says that basically the Salafi, they're doing innovations. They're asking where is Allah is an innovation. They're misguiding people. Allah's present everywhere. And they're testing people. And then he, he quoted... He said, the meaning of his siwa is, is not uh, ascending or rising above. He says this is, and he gave strange meanings. But why? I mean, all the people who have studied in India, Pakistan, or here, who've done darsnis, I mean, they all have studied Sahih Bukhari. It is part of the course. Why he didn't quote? From the most reliable book, all the Ummah agrees upon, the most reliable book after the Quran is Sahih Bukhari. All the scholars agree above it. And Imam Bukhari, at the end of his Sahih, he's got a chapter entitled Kitab al Tawheed. And in some manuscript, it comes as Kitab al Tawheed wa Rad al al Jahmiyyah. You see? So at the end, he refers to Jahmiyyah. And he has a chapter, Bab, Wa kana harshu al al ma. And Allah, the verse of in Surah Hud, Allah's harsh was upon water. And Wahua Rabul Arshil Adim. And then uh, you see Mambukhari is he, he first quotes the name of the chapter and it has a relevance to the hadith he's gonna mention it. Then it, sometimes he quotes sayings of the Salaf and others, and then he mentions the hadith. So first he said, Qala Abu Haliya, who is a great tabi, a student of Ibn Abbas, and Ibn Abbas he was the most among the most knowledgeable Sahabi. Regarding the tafsir of the Quran, that's why in all tafsir you find the saying of Ibn Masud, Ibn Abbas, and the student of Ibn Abbas, Mujahid, Sayyid, Ibn Jubair, Abu Ali, and others. Qala Abu Aliya, istawa ila samai irtafa'a. So he's saying the meaning of istiwa is irtifa'a. Irtifa means ascending, rising. You can open any Arabic uh, dictionary. Wa qala Mujahid, Mujahid, student of Ibn Abbas. Istawa ala ala al-arsh. Ala means uh, uh, elevating. So these two sayings are mentioned in Sahih Bukhari. Why? I mean, you're mentioning a topic and you're not mentioning the saying. You see, it's not quoted by Imam Bukhari through another Isnad in a later century, third or fourth, fifth. In other books, it is directly the writings of Bukhari. It is taught in every madrasa in India, Pakistan. He's doing a talk on Istiwa. He doesn't even mention Imam Bukhari is the saying. So we asked uh, uh, the Deobandis, is Imam Bukhari not reliable for you? The student of Imam Ahmad, of uh, many others, great uh, uh, scholars of the Salaf, Al-Humaydi, Nuaym ibn Hamad, you don't trust Imam Bukhari to, to transmit you authentic knowledge? He, he, he's gonna misguide his book, is, uh, and inshallah, maybe in another lecture on Taqlid, we're going to see how the Muqallid, Hanafis, and even the Deobandis, how in some of the books they insulted Imam Bukhari, they insult Imam Shafi'i, and they, they say Imam Bukhari, they have uh, stories without any snatch saying Imam Bukhari was forbidden by his teachers to give fatwa, he's not faqih, Imam Bukhari this, that, uh, he's mutasib. Because, I mean, Imam Bukhari... He's a muhaddis, you see, he's going to quote authentic hadith, and if they oppose you, mazhab, or if he criticizes your imam, or weakened him in hadith, or criticize some of the fatwa of Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, Imam Abu Hanifa, it doesn't mean the... So basically, it's another topic related to taqlid. In some of the books, I'm going to bring them, inshallah, if Allah gives me uh, life. Like Nur al Anwar, that's Imam Shafi, it's a basic book of Usul al Fiqh, of the, it's taught in every Deobandi Madrasa, Nur al Anwar. They say in it, Imam Shafi will not be forgiven on judgment, they be in the chapter Mabahis Ahliya. And they say for this and this reason. Their books are a field of insult. And Zahid al Kothari, he was known, 
He's admired by the Deobandis and he's known as well to insult the Salaf, to say Imam Malik was a criminal, Hafiz ibn Hajar will go to prostitutes, uh, 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 Abu Sheikh is a Mujassim, Dara Qutni Mujassim, and he will insult all the Muhaddis. And some of the Deobandis in Pakistan, they do the same. You see, they follow Zahid al Qasari, they insult, but this is another topic related to Taqlid and the Ta'asub. So, but, but openly, most of the Deobandis are going to say, no, Sahih Bukhari, Imam Bukhari, he's, he's a respected Salaf, we don't insult him, we only insult uh, the Salafi and Elul Hadith. But why you don't mention this book you have learned in your madrasa, and maybe you even teach it? And after Imam Bukhari mens mentions many Hadith, but look at the relevance between the Hadith and the chapter of it. Imam Shabaliullah has got a book on it. The relevance between the chapter Imam Bukhari is going to name and the Hadith in it and how it is interrelated. So he, in this chapter, he mentions a Hadith of Zainab ibn Jash. And it is a well-known Hadith. She's saying, because basically, I mean, it, it came in the Quran that the Prophet told Aisha, uh, when, Zaid was, uh, when Zainab was married to the Prophet's adoptive son, Zaid ibn Harisa Zainab, and then, Allah, uh, and then they divorced and Allah told the Prophet to marry Zainab, she said, as supported in Sahih Bukhari and, 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 and many other books, meaning she was saying to the other wives, your family married you to the Prophet وَزَّوَجْنِي اللَّهُ تَعَلَىٰ مِنْ فُوْقِ سَبْعِ سَمَوَاتِ While for me it's Allah who married me to the Prophet ﷺ مِنْ فُوْقِ سَبْعِ سَمَوَاتِ From above, فُوْقَ It means above, from above the seven uh, heavens. So, Imam Bukhari has a chapter on Istiwa. He said the meaning of Istiwa is rising, elevating, and he mentioned this hadith that uh, Zainab used to say Allah is فُوْقَ so it leaves no doubt about the intent of Imam Bukhari and the intent of, uh, and how he understood Zainab's speech. And then he mentions another hadith in this chapter of, the, of Zainab. Zainab bin Jash, he said, وَكَانَ تَفْخُرُ عَلَى النِّسَاءِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ She would take pride above the other wives of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وَكَانَ تَقُولُ She would say, إِنَّ اللَّهَ أَنْكَحْنِي فِي السَّمَاءِ Allah married me above the heaven. Some people are very ignorant about the Arabic language, but say, they say it's written fi sama, and the word fi means inside. But in the Arabic language, the book that every person who studies in India, Pakistan, they study the book Hidayatul Nahav. I forgot to bring it, I wanted to bring it. And in it, it's written about the, 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 the word fi in Arabic. It said, most of the time it comes for the meaning of zarfiya, meaning inside. But sometimes it comes with the meaning of ala, meaning above. You see, like Allah said uh, in the Quran, Firon said uh, about the magicians, I, I, I will um, crucify you upon the tree. But he said, fee. You see, so he, and then he quoted in the book Hidayatul Nahaf. So any person who studied uh, 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 among the Deobandis and the Brailvis, Nahaf, he, he has studied this book. And this book clearly says, Sometimes the word fi in the Arabic language comes with the meaning of ala, above. So in the previous hadith, the hadith explains it just that she said fauqa, and in this one, she said fi sama. You see, I mean, the hadith explains each other. So this, you see, these are the book on the right side. They are the books of hadith. They are the books, the Ahle Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the Ahlul Hadith. These are our references. And these Ibn Arabi and all these strange books, these are the Batini books. So it is... I mean, upon every layman to choose, and every Allah has given us all intelligence to decide between the way of the, it is in their own books. Nobody can say, oh, but this not this week, or, or it is written by letter scholars. It is in Sahih Bukhari, and nobody can deny it. And likewise, before going on, on, on the other book, we're going to go first on the other books of Hadith. This is Tukhfatul Ahwazi, explanation of... Um, of Sunan Tirmizi, Imam Tirmizi was a student of Imam Bukhari, and he says in his uh, uh, Sunan Tirmizi, again, it is not uh, 
quote with this nad it is direct writing of imam tirmizi and like i said normally all the people study the sihasita in the madrasa in india pakistan so it is not something hidden to mumtazul haq but why he doesn't want to bring the sayings of the salaf about it you have to ask him or the others why they don't want to uh, uh, show the from the direct books of the salaf so he said in the book kitab tafsir al quran bab min surah al mujadala uh, no is the previous one is surah al hadid so in his book of tafsir about surah uh, al hadid imam tirmizi say at the end you see the methodology of imam uh, tirmizi is different i mean for people who have studied it he mentions first the hadith and at the end the opinion of the scholars about this hadith sometimes he's going to mention about the weakness of authority and if it's a fiqh issue he's going to mention the mazhab of the scholars so he first mentioned the hadith then he mentioned the explanation of the scholars and he said in his chapter in this chapter wa ilmu allah wa qudratuhu wa sultanuhu fi kulli makan the knowledge of allah his qudra his power his sultan his authority fi kulli makan it is in every place wa huwa ala ala al arsh kama wasafa fi kitabihi and he meaning allah is upon his throne like he said in his book in the quran so we have imam tirmizi nobody can deny it i've given the reference saying that the knowledge of allah his power is in every place and he himself is above the throne throne like he described himself So another direct reference I mean this is what the Ahlul Hadith we take our fiqh our aqida everything in this book they are the, after uh, with the Quran they are our main references Now we're going to come to Sunan Abu Dawud he was student of Imam Ahmad and others and it is directly in his book it is not like Zaid Qasir used to we can you see later scholars They gather the saying of the salaf like la likai or others they say oh but this not content this one it is, this one is spoken about this there's difference and you say they try to tashkik create doubts but you can't create doubt about these books they don't come with any isnad so imam um, abu dawud at the end of his sunan one chapter before the last chapter of the books of uh, kitabul adab the book of etiquette the chapter before is kitab as-sunnah like imam bukhari he put his last chapter kitab at-tawhid and in it he re- he mentions all the attributes regarding sifa uh, the attributes of allah i forgot to mention this point he mentioned the attributes of allah's hands the fingers of allah allah laughing all the other attributes the jahmiya and the mu'tazila and the ashari deny so for him the attributes of allah it is related to tawhid and it is refuting jahmiya and for these people they say oh but imam bukhari Uh, and the salaf they only uh, uh, quoted this hadith but they said we we'll, we we'll leave the meaning to allah we do tafwid we don't know the, what the meaning is you see allah ala arsh we don't know what it means but we we don't just do tawil but why would they quote this hadith about allah descending upon every night or allah mentioning allah's foot allah's hands or all this in kitab at-tawhid wa rad al jahmiya if this hadith had no meaning how can they refute the jahmiya and why in the hadith of uh, of the hash in sahih bukhari he mentions the word fuqa uh, zainab uh, and the next chapter look at the revel- relevance of um, the next chapter after the cha- uh, after the chapter of um, of the hash the next chapter is entitled this is fathul bari so it is bab qul lillahi ta'ala ta'ruju al-malaikatu wa ruhu ilayhi the angels and the ruh ascend to him they rise to him so after mentioning the tar- chapter of the hash he mentioned this chapter ilayhi yas and then he mentions uh, 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 after the chapter wa qul jalla dhikruhu ilayhi yas'adu kalimu tayyib the good speech rises to him you see wa qala mujahid al amal salih yarfa'u al kalim tayyib so this wa yuqalu zil ma'arij allah said about in surah haqa ذو المحارج it means الملائكه تعرج الى الله he's doing tafsir of the quran saying ذو المحارج the name of allah it means that the angel ascend to him 
You see, so after the chapter of Ash, he mentions this chapter and all the attributes regarding Sifat of Allah. So this shows their creed and they understood this and they, and they, they, they understood the meaning of it and they understood this as refuting to Jahmiya. So likewise, Imam Abu Dawood, he has a book at the end, it is Kitab Sunnah. And indeed, he has a chapter, Al Jahmiya, Bab Fil Jahmiya. You see, so in it he quotes a long hadith. You see, I'm just going to read you. It's hadith number 4726. It's, I'm only going to read you the end. He says in it, Allah is greater than that. Woe to you. Do you know what Allah is? His throne is above the heavens like this. And he gestured with his fingers like a dome over it. Oh, basically, it's not this hadith I wanted to mention. But this one is a weak hadith. It is mentioned by the Salaf, many of the Salaf, that the shape of the arch is in a dome, but it is a weak hadith. The hadith I wanted to mention. Oh, no, no, it, it carries on after this one, yeah. Ibn Bashar said in this hadith, he, he had an addition, Allah is above the throne. You see, when he, the Prophet ﷺ make a shape of a dome, though it is a weak hadith, but the intent is to show why Imam Abu Dawood brought this hadith against the Jahmiya. You see? He said, Allah is uh, above, he, he, the hadith says, Allah is above his throne, his throne. Inna Allah fawqa archihi, wa arshu fawqa samawatihi. So this hadith, though it is a weak hadith, you see, Shikhal Bani, Zubair Ali, Zayn, other hadith that say it's a weak, but the fact that Imam Abu Dawood brought this hadith saying, Allah focus on what against the Jahmiya, this shows Imam Dawood's understanding of, of, of this hadith. Then, he, he, in the same chapter, against the Jahmiya, he has another chapter. He has another hadith. And this hadith is also mentioned in Sunan Ibn Majah. So I'm going to do two in one, you see. Sunan Ibn Majah, in the first chapter, contrary to the others, in his first chapter, he has the book, Kitab al-Sunnah. And in the chapter, Ma Ankaratil Jahmiya, what the Jahmiya denies, he puts all the attributes about seeing Allah, Allah's foot, Allah's hands, and this hadith as well. So in his first chapter, Imam Ibn Majah, Kitab al-Sunnah, same, about the hadith that the Jahmiya denied, They mentioned this hadith, you see. I mean, it is speaking about the clouds. And then the Prophet said, how much distance do you think there is between the heaven and the earth? The Prophet asked the companions. They said, we do not know. They said, between them is a distance of 71 or 72, 73 year, three years. So the distance between the, the earth and the first heaven is 72, 73 years. Then above the seven heaven, there is a sea. You see, I mean, it carries on. The, this is the distance between the heavens. Then above the seventh heaven, there is a sea. Between whose top and bottom is a distance like, the between, like that between one heaven and another. So he's saying above the seventh heaven, there is a sea. Then above that, there are eight mountain goats. You see, and these eight goats, I mean, the scholars, when they interpreted this hadith, they say it is, it is referring to the angels because it is the eight angels who are carrying the arsh of Allah, the throne of Allah, and they mention in Surah Haqqa. This is why Imam Tirmizi also mentioned this hadith, but not against the Jahmiya. He mentions this hadith in... Um, he mentioned this hadith in... Um, in his book of Tafsir uh, of Surah Haqqa, in Kitab Tafsir al Quran, Surah Haqqa, about the verse, This day, eight, meaning eight angels, will carry the arsh of Rahman. And he quoted this hadith. And he said about this hadith that this is Hassan Gharib. So, according to Imam Tirmidhi's research, this hadith was Hassan. But obviously, all the muhaddisin, all the scholars, they weakened it. But, I mean, what I'm showing is how the Salaf understood it to refute the Jahmiya. 
Then it says this hadith, okay, there are seven goats above the seven, that the seed, seven goats, that the eight angels carrying a lazar, and that the distance between their hooves and their knees is like the distance between one heaven and the next. Then on their backs is the throne, and the distance between the bottom and the top of the throne is like the distance between one heaven and another. So this is just the distance between um, the bottom and the top of the throne. Then at the end, this is the relevant part against the Jahmiyyah. Then Allah is above that, may he be blessed and exalted. Thumma Allah ta'ala fawqa thalika. So Imam Abu Dawood, you see Sheikh Zubair Ali Zai weakens this hadith, he says <coughs> that it has one of the narrator didn't listen from the other one and another one has got some ikhtilat. But it's not a big, big, it's not someone accused of lying or someone accused of fist. It is just some disconnection and some I mean, not severe weakness. But for Abu Dawood, this hadith, Ibn Majah, they all quoted this, and many other salaf in their books, they quoted this hadith against the Jahmiyyah. And the wording is, ثُمَّ اللَّهَ تَعَلَى فَوْقَ ذَلِكَ Meaning above the seven heavens, the harsh Allah is above it. So they connected the harsh and Allah being above it. You see, they didn't say Allah fikulli makan, or we don't know, Allah is neither there nor there, he doesn't exist, I mean. This is the, uh, like the atheist, one that would say Allah doesn't exist, neither here, neither, this is actually atheism. So this is the creed of the Salaf, you see. There are much more quotes from the Salaf, because the, you see, they accuse us, Al-Uladis, you don't respect the Imams, you don't do taqlid, you don't respect the Imams. But who are not giving their teachings, and who are turning away from the clear books, even so, and they're teaching the, these books of the Salaf. So I'm going to mention not many narrations from the book al Hulu of Imam Zahabi with the notes of Sheikh Albani. Just of the few, because you see, lots of these books, because they're not direct references, they're going to have his nads, and then the neo Jahmiya Kosadis, they're going to speak, oh no, but this narrator, that. So I'm just going to mention some few that even them, they agree to be authentic. You see the Diobandis and the followers of Zahid al kothari But before this, you see, these are some hadith, like the hadith of Zainab ibn Jahash and others. They say, Allah fi sama, Allah fawqa sama. And there are many other hadith. It's not just one or two. There are many hadith from the Prophet in which he says, fi sama, Fokasama, the Sahaba says Fisama Fokasama. The Salaf have written books about it. You see, many have compiled these narrations in their book in the refutation of the Jahmiyyah. But so first, uh, Mumtazul Haq Diobandi, he says Istiwa doesn't mean that, Istiwa means uh, whatever he did will, uh, taking after, looking after, turning to, and he didn't mention the tafsir of the Salaf or their books, tafsir Tabari, any early tafsir. Then he says, oh, the Salafi, they have uh, the hadith about al Jariya, the free slave girl. And this hadith, he, he, he mentioned the narration about this, you see, um, a slave girl, the, uh, I mean, something happened to her. She went, I mean, his owner went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then he said, uh, and she couldn't speak. And she, she said, where is Allah? She put it towards the sky. You see? And he quoted this hadith, which is in Muslim Ahmad and other books. <coughs> And he said, oh no, she, because she was new to Islam and she couldn't, whatever that will they do that kosari, she just showed up that Allah is not something among the idols, so she pointed, it's something uh, different from the idols, so she only pointed to the sky, but she didn't meant Allah was above the sky. What is, I mean, when you are going to present a case, you bring your stronger evidence, you see. If you have a hadith in Sahih Bukhari, Muslim, and the same hadith with different words in uh, the Sunan or the Muslim, the Imam Ahmad, you're going to bring the Sahih Bukhari or Muslim, won't you? So he mentioned this wording of uh, Imam Ahmad, he could do ta'wil, strange extrapolation, but he didn't bring the narration of Imam Muslim. And the words of Imam Muslim, I mean, they're well known to you. I mean, the Prophet uh, uh, Muawiyah ibn Hakam Sulami because her slave girl was looking after the sheep, the wolf came 
He's uh, sorry. He's eight and one, and then he slapped, smacked her on the face, and then obviously he felt bad, felt remorse. He went to the Prophet. What should I do? And the Prophet said, "I will. T- uh, I mean, I will test her." And he asked her, "Where is Allah?" And she said, "Fi sama." You see, like in the same in the hadith of Zainab bin Ibn Jash, "Fi sama." And he said, "Wham?" He said, "The Messenger of Allah." And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, "Free her because she's a believer." So Mumtazul Haq. I mean. When you want to refute someone's opinion, like, like in fiqh or whatever, and his main argument is in Sahih Bukhari Muslim, you mention the strongest narration and then you explain it. You don't go to Muslim, try to refute Muslim Ahmad and just close your eyes on Sahih Muslim. And every, I mean, even the Hanafi scholars, Mullah Ali Qari Badr Naini, they say sometimes, when talking about fiqh and defending Hanafi fiqh, they say, oh, but the wordings of Bukhari and Muslim are thus, and they should be given preference over the wordings in the Sunan and the Musnad and the Mu'jam and other books. So when you want to refute someone, you should bring his strongest delil. You shouldn't bring the lowest and then try to extrapolate it. But why did Mumtazul Haq did not mention this uh, hadith with this wording? And Imam Muslim, it is agreed upon. You see, none of the scholars, 16 of the Salaf, I mean, more than 16 quoted it, this Hadith. Some even quoted it against the Jahmiyyah. None of them weakened them. Even the Ashari scholars, Qazi, Iyad, Nawawi, I mean, they're not properly, but there's discussion properly, Ashari. They didn't weaken this Hadith. None. Only Zahid al Qasr in this century, he, he, he said, oh, the words of Muslim are not right, and those of Ahmad are strongest. Some others, they say, oh, there is, is like Nuhamim Nuh Keller, there is Iftirab, meaning mit- contradiction in it. But every person of knowledge knows there's only contradiction when the two hadiths are of the same level. If one is the strongest level and one is lowest level, how can you establish contradiction? And there's, first, there's no contradiction between them. But just to explain this, Sheikh Albani about the hadith, about pointing, he says it's a weak, he's got a narrator who is weak. Other scholars like Ibn Khuzayma, they say there are two different events. There are two different events, uh, uh, and the two different slave girls, one she couldn't speak and one could speak. The one who couldn't speak pointed to the sky, and the one in Muslim, she could speak, she said, Fisama. And so when you can gather the two hadiths, or you can pre- give tarjih, Preference to one, what you want to, this is the people of uh, Muhtazili and the Ahlul Rai. They want to destroy Sunnah with their weak intelligence. So this word, Fissama. Now, imagine the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah described him in the Quran as being, I mean, uh, fearful for the believers, loving them, Harisun Alayhim, Bil Mu'minina Raufur Rahim. And he, he asks a question. To slave girl, and she said, Allah fi sama. And the word fi, like I've said, even in the Deobandi books of Na- Naho grammar, fi comes with the meaning of Allah, above. You have a slave girl saying to you, Allah is above the harsh. And if this meaning implied any wrong belief, like uh, Mumtazul Haq saying, Salafi are misguiding the people, if the Prophet would have closed the door to, you see, Prophet in many hadiths, if you read, sometimes he would say, people asked him uh, about, uh, or sh- uh, ha- I have a um, uh, fasting to do a vote in the Jahiliyyah, should I do it? Prophet said, yes. But then he said, but uh, d- 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 this place, I mean, people used to worship idols there. He was making sure, you see, there was no bad meaning in it, or there was no... You see how you do it. You see, he would clarify what do you mean did, oh, you're doing this, but would the people of Jahiliyyah, was this place considered? Then he would agree or not. He's not. So if he approved our statement and it contained any doubt, would the Prophet leave us in a doubt and say, oh, you, you have a statement, it could be, a, 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 it could imply a wrong belief? Can someone, uh, the Prophet approved us, said, free her, she's a believer. You see, so the Prophet approved us saying, and it is not only in this hadith, many other books of Salaf, and I'm going to co- uh, quote other hadith, they mention the Salaf uh, Abu Bakr Umar, sometimes pointing uh, at the sky, sometimes saying, focus uh, about Samawa, sometimes saying, Fisama. <clears throat> so, likewise, I mean, it is mentioned in uh, Abu Dawud and Tirmizi. The Prophet said, Arahimuna Yahamur Rahman. 
Irhamu man fil ardi, arhamukum man fis sama. So the people who show mercy, Allah will show, Ar-Rahman will show mercy to them. Give mercy upon the people of the earth and man fis sama, the one above the heaven will give mercy to you. So you see, in this one is the same. In other hadith, by Bukhari and Muslim, he said, "Allah ta'mununi wa na aminun man fi samai yatini khabru samai sabahan wa masan." So he's saying, "Do it's about." I mean, some people uh, they didn't agree with the Prophet's um, decisions and and they didn't trust him. Some people and he said, "Do you not trust me?" Well, I'm trusted by man fi sama by the one who is above the heaven. So it is not only in this hadith, in many other hadiths. In other hadiths of Abu Huraira in Sahih Muslim, he says, a Prophet said about a husband who invites her wife and she refuses to come. He said, there's no wife who does this except that, إِلَّا كَانَ الَّذِي فِي السَّمَاءِ سَاخِتًا عَلَيْهَا حَتَّى يَرْضًا عَنْهَا زَوْجُهَا He said, if she refuses to, then الَّذِي فِي السَّمَاءِ will be angry upon them until her husband is satisfied with her. So again, it is in Sahih Muslim, nobody can deny its authenticity. And there are many other hadiths you see saying about when the soul of the dead in Musnad Ahmad and Hakim will, will go above and if the, the one of the believer, it will go above the one heaven, second heaven and others and then it will reach the sama التي فيها الله تأم Meaning, then it will reach the heaven above which is Allah. So there are many, many hadiths. I mean, the hadith of Isra wal Mi'raj, Prophet ascended. Many other hadiths having these words. So you, t- you see, it is not only one hadith or one verse. He said, oh, the only siwa and this hadith. It is many hadiths. I mean, these are only... Those in Sahih Bukhari Muslim in the Salaf, they had many others and it's going to take too much time to, uh, to, 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 to expand on them. But just a s- small summary uh, I've done. And in only, I mean, in the Quran, there's not only the word istiwa. There are many other words. So first, I'm going to mention some verses. Then I'm going to mention some saying of the Salaf. S- some directly in their books. You see, nobody can deny them, scholars of the uh, third, fourth, fifth century. But first, after seeing the saying of the muhaddis, we're going to see something of the in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, in Surah Al Mulk, Amintu man fi samai an yaksifa bikum al ardu faithaiya tamur. And the translation of the verse, it is not a Salafi translation. It is the tra- English translation done by the Deobandis of the tafsir of um, Mufti Shafi Uthmani, the father of uh, Taqi Uthmani, who is one of the greatest authority in Deobandi. His tafsir is Ma'arif al-Quran. Anybody can download this PDF, eight volumes online. You Google it, Ma'arif al-Quran, Mufti Shafi Uthmani. You can download it, check it, and read it. So the explanation, <coughs> the tafsir I'm going to read is a Deobandi tafsir. And now I'm going to ask the Deobandi layman, do, do you, don't you trust your own uh, scholar of tafsir? You consider him as chief justice of Pakistan? So it's not a small Molvi. It, it's a big, big, big authority of the Deobandi. It's al Quran and it's their own translation. It's not mine or Salafi. So he said about this verse in, in Surah Mulk, have you become fearless of him who is in the sky? If he makes you sink into the earth and it start trembling at once. So this is the, the 16 verse of Surah Mulk. And this, there's another one. The next verse, I mean, the explanation is, according to Mufti Shafi Uthmani, Though Allah has granted the earth such a balanced infrastructure that man cannot go into it without digging it, yet Allah has the power to make the earth swallow up all the communities living on its surface. So Mufti Shafi Usman, he said, I mean to man fi sama. Have you become fearless of him who is in the sky? He says, it's Allah. 
He doesn't say it's the angels who is in the sum or someone else. He says Allah. It means though Allah has granted your good balance, but he can destroy it. The next verse is once people of another type of punishment. أَمَنْتُمْ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاءِ أَنْ يُرْسِلَ عَلَيْكُمْ حَاسِبًا فَسَتَعْلَمُونَ كَيْفَ نَذِيرٌ Oh, have you become fearless of him who is in the sky if he loses a violent wind with stones against you? So Allah SWT is saying to the people, have you become fearless of مَنْ فِي السَّمَاءِ of the one above the heavens? So Mufti Usmani explained this. So you will soon come to know how was my warning. Uh, in other words, at the mom, <clears throat> they at the moment feel secure that the supreme being in the heaven. This is the words of Mufti Osmani. The supreme being in the heaven will not release against them a certain squall of stones together with violent wind. Soon they will realize how true the divine, the divine warning was. So this explanation of these verses in Surah by Mufti Usman, he said the supreme being above the sky, it's Allah, you see. <clears throat> and likewise, you see, there is this verse, there are many other verses. <clears throat> like the incident between Fir'aun and Musa, the, the Salaf, they quoted these verses against the Jahmiyyah, you see. وَقَالَ فِرَعَنُ يَا أَيُّهَا الْمَلَوُ مَا عَلِمْتُ لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَهٍ غَيْرِي فَأَوْقِدْ لِي يَا هَامَنُ عَلَى التِّينِ فَجْعَلْ لِي سَرْحًا لَعَلِي أَتْلُوْ أَتْتَالِعُ إِلَى إِلَهِ مُوسَى وَإِنِّي لَا أَذْنُهُ مِنَ الْكَاذِبِينَ This is mentioned in Surah Al-Qasas, verse 38. Also, there's a similar verse in Surah Khafir. Firam said, O chiefs, I know not that you have an ilah other than me. And then he said, O Haman, take bricks out of clay and set up a sarhan, make a tower, in order that I may look and reach the God of Musa. And verily, I think that he, Musa, is one of the liars. So he said to Haman, you don't have any, uh, to his people, you don't have any other deity except me. And then he said to his Haman, build a tower so I can reach the Ilah of Musa. But I believe him to be a liar. The scholars of Tafsir, you see, like Tabari and the other Salaf, many other books of Tafsir, like, I mean, Salaf, Ibn Khuzama, Ibn Abdel Bar, Usman Darimi, Ibn Qudama, Zahabi, they all said this is clear that um, the uh, Prophet um, Musa salam, told him that the true divinity is above the heavens. That's why he had the idea of building a tower. He wouldn't have the idea of building a tower if you, and this is why he said at the end. I believe you to be a liar. And this is told by Tabari and all the scholars of the Salaf, many others, that he only said, such Ibn Abdel Bar, they said, he only said this because Musa told him that Allah is above the heaven. And even Abu Lais al-Samar Qandi, who's a Hanafi scholar, he has a famous book of Tafsir, Bahra al He said about the Tafsir, wa inni la min al-kazibin, he explained this verse that I think Musa and what he's saying that there is a deity above the heaven is from the liars. So even the Hanafi scolars of the, of the fourth century, you see before, I mean, uh, the later ones who had more will, he said, yes, Musa told him Allah was above the heaven. And that's how the scholars uh, like Tabari and the scholars of the Salaf understood this. So then, now after mentioning these others, I will mention some of the saying of the Salaf. That they themselves agree to be authentic. I'm not gonna, those narrations you see, they have any excuse to speak and, and find an extrapolation or, 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 or deny its authenticity. Authenticity. So, so Imam al Awza'i, you see, from the Tabi, uh, from the followers of the Tabi'in, he said, and this is narrated by Al Bayhaqi, who is an Ashari scholar. It's narrated by Al Bayhaqi and many others, you see, Usman Darimi and, and many other scholars in their book against the Jahmiyyah. But 
Well, this narration is very good because it is narrated by Al-Bay Haqqin, his Asma wa Sifat. And they, he's a Ashari scholar, so he's not purely a Salafi scholar. And the Isnad is authentic and he's speaking about all the Tabi. He's not speaking about his own opinion. And he said, we were, at the time, the tabi, the student of the Sahaba, were many. You see, it wasn't late after the time. At the time of the tabi, we, were, we used to say, Allah glorified is above his arsh. So this is the opinion of Imam Rosa. Yani, this is the opinion of all the Salaf. And this is not, it has only great Imam from the greatest of the Siqat. None can deny uh, its authenticity of Imam al -Azai. So likewise, I, I will quote another narration of um, Ibn Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak, who used to be Hanafi. And then he became, uh, according to the Madhab of Ahlul Hadith, though the Hanafi are going to deny this, but even... Um, Qazi Iyad, he said in his book, Tartib al-Madarik, that he left the Hanafi Mazhab. But this is a, uh, another topic. Abdul, Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak. He's saying, and this is a guest narrated in Asma Sifat and other books of... Um, this is a guest narrated by Imam al bayhaqin by many of the Salaf. You see, this is like uh, Hafiz ibn al Qimjuz. This is like Mutawatir coming from uh, Abdullah, from many... Abd, uh, Imam Ahmad's um, sons, Abdullah ibn Ahmad, in his book of Sunnah, and many others of the Salaf, Khatib al Baghdadi, many others mentioned it. It comes like a mutawatir. You see, non, even them, the Kosari people and the Deobandis, they do not deny its uh, authenticity. And he said, he was asked, Rabbana Azza wa Jal. How should we know our Lord? And he said, Fi sama isabi ala, ala arshihi. He said, Above, fi above, above the seven heaven, upon his throne. Wala na kulu kamata kulu al jahmiya. And we do not say like the jahmiya say, Inna hu ha huna fil ard. He is there upon the earth. And then there are sim similar sayings of. Um, in one of the narrations, Sheikh Albani points, he says, Allah is above his arsh. The narration of Isaac ibn Rahawaya from uh, Ibn al-Mubarak, he says, above his arsh, ba'inun min khalqi, separate from his creation. So not only is above his arsh, but he's separated from creation. And they say he's everywhere, he's mixed up within creation and everything. So this narration is clear. I mean, there are many similar narrations by many others, Imam of the Salaf. People have written books, Hafiz Zahabi, Hafiz Ibn al-Qim Josia, Ibn al qudama Many others have written books gathering all these narrations. The Salaf, I mean, uh, Usman Darimi, his book, Ibn Abi Hatim, Lali Kiai, Imam Sabuni, many others have written. But because in a lecture we can't speak about all the narrations, but it's just, this is just the stronger, one among the strongest, Sayings of the Salaf regarding this topic. Now, after this, we're going to come to the books written by the Salaf. You see? Ibn Qutayba, he's a scholar of the 3rd century, he was born in 213. He has a book, Tawil Mukhtalaf al Hadith. You see, it doesn't need, I mean, Zahid Kosari cannot deny this or the other people speaking about this, Nad, and others. He's saying, how can you say that Allah is everywhere when he said, the most gracious has done is he won the throne? Then he said to him, ascend the good words. How can anything that ascend unto him be with him? How can you say Allah is everywhere? How can the angel and the spirit ascend unto him where they are with him? If these people were to go back to the fitra and the nobility didn't hinder them from knowing the creator, they would have known that Allah is the high, the most high, and that the hands raise up in dua towards him. As all the Ummah, the Arab and non-Arab, I like say, Allah is above the sky. Inna Allah hafiz sama. This is written in his book, Ibn Qutayba, he how can the Jahmiya say he's present everywhere? Well, the Fitra, all the people, the Arab Ajam, they used to say, taqulu, inna Allah hafiz sama. 
So this is the saying of Ibn Qutaybah. After we're going to go to the saying of Muhammad Ibn... We're going to go to the saying, Hafiz Ibn Abd al in his book Tamhid, great Maliki scholars uh, of the third century, he's saying the same, the same, he quoted many quotes. He said in his book Tamhid, and also from the proof that Allah is above the throne, above the seven heavens, is that the believers, all of them, Arabs, non-Arab, when a matter concerns them or difficulty befalls them, they raise their faces to the heaven and direct their raised hands to the heaven seeking succor from Allah their Lord. And this is common among the general masses as well as the elite. And the Prophet said to the slave girl who master wished to free her if she was a believer, so it Prophet tested her asking, where is Allah? So she pointed to the heaven. You see, so this is directly from Ibn Abd al-Bar. Great authority among the Salaf, great Maliki scholar, great Muhaddis. This is not like Muntaz Ullaka saying the Salafi by asking the question, why is Allah doing a bid'ah? They are misguiding the youth, they are misguiding people. This is half his, look, okay, we are misguided, but what about these scholars? Why don't you say? Ibn Abd al-Bar, Ibn Khuzayma, Ibn Manda, Ibn Qutba, they're all misguided. But I mean, because I mean, this is how these people are. If they say, all oh, these scholars said this, the layman, they would say, okay, there's a problem. <laughs> so they're not gonna mention all this, uh, the, these scholars from the Salaf. Look, Abdullah ibn, not only, uh, okay, we're gonna carry on. Muhammad ibn Isaq ibn Manda, from the fourth century, Hanbali scholar, he said, directly in his book, just one second, because I, I want to quote the Arabic as well. He has, uh, Yeah, Ibn Manda. He has in his Kitab Tawheed, it is published today, it is not in manuscript, it's published. Bian, he has a chapter entitled, Bian Akhir Yadulu Ala Anna Allah Ta'ala Fawqa Arshihi Ba'inan An Khalqihi. Another chapter showing that Allah Ta'ala is Fawqa Arshihi, above his throne, Ba'inan An Khalqi, separated from his creation, because when the Jahmiya the first, the Sahaba and others, they were used only to say Allah is above the Arsh. Because that was enough, everybody understood this. But when the Jahmiya, they started to say no Allah is everywhere, then they added the word, many Salaf, Ba'inan, separated from creation. So, I mean, because they used to speak to people in the century third, four, the Jahmiya was Mu'tazili, was spreading definitely now, so they clarified the matter, so nobody can say this is invented, you see, upon these Imams. Ibn Bata al uqbari another Hanbali scholar. He was born in 304. He has a book, Al-Ibana. You see, it's directly from his book. And he said, Al-Iman bi Allah ta'ala ala arshihi ba'inun min khalqihi wa ilmuhu muhitun bi khalqihi. He said that Allah is chapter, Allah being above his harsh, separated from the creation, and his knowledge is encompassing his creation. So, and then he has many saying, the, he said, he says in this chapter, the Muslim from the Sahaba and the Tabin have reached a consensus that Allah is on his throne, above the heaven, separate from his creation. As for his saying Allah, he's with you, wa ma'akum, it is referring to his knowledge as the scholars have explained. So this is again, Ibn al Bata al Akbari, he was born in 304, so at the beginning of the fourth century. He writes a book, Ali Bana, and he says this. This is Zahid al Kothari, Mumtaz al They cannot deny the Salaf saying this. Their books are published, their manuscripts are present in, in, in the Maktaba Zahid and other places. So nobody in India and in all other places. So like Abu Qasim Atabarani, the author of the Mojam, he's got a chapter as well in his Kitab Sunnah about, he said, Bab Majaf istiwa, istiwa Allahu ta'ala ala arshi bahinun min khalqihi. Same. And then he mentions all these hadiths like Abu Dawud and others. You see about Allah, the, the, the eight angels carrying the arsh in shape of goats. And 
though the hadith is weak, but he, he mentions it in a chapter. Majaf fistiwa Allahu Taala ala arshi bainun min khalqihi. So Abu Qasim Tabarani, same he was born in 260. It's directly in his book. Abu Bakr Al-Juri, Hafiz Abu Sheikh, great muhaddis. You see, born in 274. In his book Al Azama, which is published today by um, Raz, with the tahkik of uh, Indian scholar Razala Mubarakpuri, Zikrash Rabbi Taala, wa Allah Allah Rabbi Fauqa Arshihi. So again, he mentions the same hadith and Zahid Al Qurishri. He used to say, "Oh, these muhaddis of the second, third, they are mujassim, but the Dioban they don't like to like Zahid Qurishri say, but." The, you have to decide in front of the layman. Either you say these muhaddis of the second, third army is guided mujassim, or you, you have to explain this to the layman. You see, you can't say, "Oh, we respect the salaf, the alul hadis are disrespecting the imams. We love the imams." But for the creed, they don't take from the imams. They take from Ibn Arabi. Allah is everywhere. Like so say Abu Hamad Al Asal, great muhaddis, in his book Al Ma'rifah, he said the same. Uh, and he mentions the saying of the scroll, the the salaf, the saying of Ibn Al Bubarak in his Kitab Al Ma'rifa, and the saying of Ibn Masud, "Walash fakama, walawasa wajal fakar shihi, la yakhfa alayhi shayin min ahmalikum." So this is a hadan, a Hasan hadith of Abdullah bin Masud, and this is, and what is I mean strange is e- even uh, Abu Jafar Al Tahawi in his Aqidah, which is a famous book uh, uh, of creed. He says in Aqidah Tahawiya, when speaking about Allah, just one second, because I want to quote the Arabic as well because it is more relevant to the topic. Because he's one of the great authority of the Ahnaf, one of the greatest muhaddis, Abu Jafar Al Tahawi. So I'd like to, I mean, he says as well that, uh, "Wallahu fawqahu," meaning above his uh, throne. When he speaks about the throne, he said, "Allah, he does not need the throne. He's not dependent on it, but he is muhitun bi khalqihi," meaning he's encompassing his creation. We're going to see. Later on, how Ibn Taymiyyah explained the meaning of Allah encompassing the muhaytun uh, bihalqihi. Inshallah, we have the Risala Arshi of Ibn Taymiyyah, Risala Al Arshiya, Kitab Al Arsh wa Wal Ihata. We're going to see the meaning. So he said, Allah muhaytun bihalqihi wa fakahu. This is Abu Jafar Tahawi who says this in his um, in his book of Aqidah, which is taught in by all the. Even Salafi universities in Saudi Arabia and in India, Pakistan, Sheikh Ibn Baz, when the Pakistan in the university in Pakistan, the first one after one Pakistan was made, the first university Jamia Salafia Faisalabad was made, and Sheikh Ismail Salafi talked to Sheikh Ibn Baz. Sheikh Ibn Baz then managed the funds by the authorities, and Sheikh Ibn Baz participated to the the books that should be studied in it and he said you should put tahawiya and also other books like fathul majid and others and then he after it was made he sent sheikh abdul mohsin al abad to faisalabad and others so this book it is not only studied in india uh, but it also studied by the deobandi so he said in it allah muhitun bi khalqihi wa fawqahu this is not something invented by The Sal Maliki. This is the early uh, uh, Hanafi authorities. One of the greatest muhaddis, faqi, imams. He also says the same. So then, we'll, we'll, I mean, not only what is strange is not only they said this, but then when the Jahmiyyah spread their fitna, the Salaf used other terms. First, we have seen by inun and khalqi separated. Then they used the expression bidatihi. They said Allah is present on His harsh. Be that He had to add this word because of the fitna of the Jamia saying Allah is everywhere. Like Abdullah ibn Abi Zaid al Qarawani, he has a book, a Risala, and the first it's a book of fiqh, but the first chapter is relating to creed. This chapter has been translated now into English. 
with the explanation of Sheikh Najmi, and he says in his uh, Risala, إِنَّهُ فَوْقَ عَرْشِهِ الْمَجِيدِ Allah is above his noble throne, بِذَاتِهِ by essence, وَهُوَ فِي كُلِّ مَكَانْ بِعِلْمِهِ and he is in every place by his knowledge. So no, there's no isnad. It's a direct book of, um, of Imam al-Qirawani, who was one of the greatest authority of, uh, among the Malikis. They used to call him uh, Im the second Imam Malik. You see, these are books from the Salaf. You see, how can the people say the Salaf are misguiding the people? Why don't they say Imam al-Qirawani and others are misguiding? the people. And I will just finish for the last quote. After Inshallah, we're going to start refuting the claims made by Mumtaz al-Haq. The last book I'm going to quote is Kitab Tuhid of Ibn Khuzema, one of the greatest Shafi Muhaddis. He says in his Kitab Tuhid, it is published, فتلك الأخبار كلها دالة على أن الخالق البارى فوق سبع سماوات. He says all these narrations show that Allah is above the seven earths. لا على مزامة المعطلة. Not like those who deny the attributes of Allah. أن ما بودهم that the the object of worship هو معهم في منازلهم. That the object of worship is with in their houses. We do not say like the معطلة say. That the Mahbud, the worshipped, is in the houses. Then he says, uh, in another chapter, he says in his Kitab Tawheed, to underline the exact quote. Anyway, I mean, inshallah, we have seen the other quote saying, refuting the Jahmiya. Again, like I said, he said in the other chapter, he clearly refuted the Jahmiyyah, saying Allah is present in the houses. And this is, I mean, Zahid al-Qasari, he used to quote from Fakhreddin Razi, saying this is not a kitab to her, this is kitab of shirk. But normally the Deobandis, they don't like, like Zahid al-Qasari to insult the scholars, and they want to portray themselves as orthodox Sunnis, traditional Sunnis. Is Ibn Khuzayma, a great imam from the Salaf, not reliable for you? Or is uh, Ibn Arabi more reliable, the one who said Firon died up an Iman and, and, and something else? So now we're going to come to the arguments brought by Mumtazul Haq. Okay. He said, he quoted the saying of Allah subhanahu wa وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسُّسُ بِهِ نَفْسُ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ this is in Surah Qaf, verse 16. Allah as far as um, uh, it is saying, and we are nearer to him than in his jugular vein. So he's saying Allah is nearer to the jugular vein, meaning he is present everywhere. He's there. So again, I'm going to quote from, and I'm going to let the Deobandi themselves decide if the tafsir done by Mumtazul Haq is an orthodox, traditional tafsir. The Mufti Muhammad Shafi, in his Ma'arif al-Quran, volume 8, page 156 of the English translation, says, the closeness in this verse by consensus of scholars refers to, near, 
nearness in terms of all encompassing knowledge. He said the, the nearness, the proximity here, according to all scholars, it is proximity referring to knowledge, not in terms of physical closeness. In this manner, the verse means that Allah's power and knowledge has so encompassed man from within and without that, his power and knowledge is nearer than his jugular vein. So this is not my explanation. This is the explanation of Chief Justice Muhammad Shafi, the father of Taqi Uthmani. Then after this, he mentioned some Sufi explanation of Sufi Jalal Din Rumi and others that also the Sufi said that um, uh, uh, it, uh, the, the, some Sufis have a special link with Allah which cannot be explained. And, but he said this is only for those who worship a lot. So we don't believe in this kind of um, belief. But first he mentioned the saying of the scholars, then he went on to mention the, the saying of, like he called them, Tafsir Mazari and Jalal Din Rubi. And, but he said, we have learned earlier the interpretation of the majority of the commentators that it is not a physical proximity, but rather the all-encompassing full and complete knowledge of Allah. And then he says after, Ibn Kasir interprets it in a third way. He says that the pronoun we does not refer to the being of Allah, but to his angel who are at all time with man. So they know man's soul so closely than man himself that man himself is not so well aware of it. Allah knows best. So he did, after mentioning that the saying of all scholars that it is proximity of knowledge, he then says, okay, some Sufi, they said the, 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 the servant who do loss of worship, they have some kind of connection with Allah, but we cannot explain it without any cave. But then he said there's a third explanation uh, and that the term نَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ نَحْنُ refers to the angels. And the third one, like uh, explained by Sheikh al-Islam Ahmad ibn Taymiyyah in his uh, book Shar Hadith Nuzul, this is the right one. Because Allah said afterwards, إِذْ يَتَلَقَ الْمُتَلَقِيَانِ عَنِ الْيَمِينِ وَعَنِ الشِّمَالِ قَعِيدِ مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيذٌ so this is the next verse. When the two receivers, so we are closer to him, when the two receivers, meaning recording angels, record, receive, one sitting on the right and one on the left, to note his or her action. Not a word does he utter, but there is a watcher by him ready. So the proximity mentioned here, it is not absolute. It is particularized at this time. If, when, يَتَلَقَ الْمُتَلَقِيَانِ You see? The time when the angel receive, one sitting at the right, one and, and, and if, like Sheikh Islam says, if the meaning was proximity of the essence, meaning of the Lord, meaning if, if the meaning was Allah is closer by his essence to the jugular vein, this would not be particularized to this time when the uh, angel receive is. You see, the verse carries on. When? You see, it is particularized with the time. So if Allah is, it is not particular as Allah's uh, knowledge and uh, Allah's um, power. And there would not be any relevance to mention the sitting of the two angels and there won't be any correspondence, you see. So we have to properly to understand tafsir we have to read the verses before, the verse after, see the relevance between munasaba and then interpret. And this saying, like uh, uh, Mumtazullah quoted this verse, and this is the right verse. In this verse, it is Allah, the angels are closer to the person's jugular vein. And like it was in, in Surah Al-Waqi'ah, Mumtazullah quoted it as well, when Then why do they, you not intervene when the, the soul of the dying person, in brackets, reaches the throat? When the, the soul reaches the throat, why do you don't, Allah says to the people, why don't you interfere? And you, at the moment, are looking on, but we are nearer to him than you, 
but you see not. نَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْكُمْ وَلَكِنْ لَا تُبْسِرُونَ Here as well Ibn Taymiyyah says, نَحْنُ is the angels. Because at this time is the angel of death. When the soul comes here who are ready to pick it, you see. Like was in, this, in the other argument, Ibn Taymiyyah says, if Allah intended the proximity of his noble essence, why would he particularize it to this time when the soul reaches um, you see your neck, الحلقوم, the throat. And at the end, you see this is the beginning, الحلقوم, and at the end it is said, وَلَكِنْ لَا تُبْصِرُونَ Meaning, but you see not. And Ibn Timur says, but you see, as this is the, 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 the words you see not, this is only said when there is something that is permissible to be seen. In some conditions, meaning you can see it. But we don't see it. You see, it's only permissible to say, but you see not, if there was something there to be seen. Meaning the angels are invisible, but you see them not. And Allah cannot be seen in any way in this condition. You see? So he's saying the words at the end. Meaning you cannot see. It only refers to the angels. It cannot refer to Allah. And he says, and also, what, what shows the truth of this saying, he used the pronoun, the plural form, Nahnu. He didn't say, I am closer to his jugular vein. He says, Nahnu. And there are many other verses who Allah uses the plural form and they have a different meaning as using the singular form. Like in the verse, نَتْلُوْ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ نَبَأِ مُوسَى وَفِرْعَوْنَ بِالْحَقِّ لِقَوْمِ يُؤْمِنُونَ We'll recite to you some of the news of Musa and Fir'aun in truth for people who believe in Surah Qasas. And he's, Allah says likewise, نَحْنُ نَقُسُ عَلَيْكَ أَحْسَنَ الْقَسَسِ بِمَا أُوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ In Surah Yusuf 3 again, we relate unto you. It's not I relate, it's we relate. And likewise in Surah Al-Qiyamah, verses 17 and 19, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, inna Qur'ana, thumma inna alayna bayana. It is for us, for us, you see, alayna, plural form, to collect it and give you the ability to recite it. And when we have recited to you, plural form, then follow its recitation. Then for us, it is to make it clear. Inna alayna, plural form. So Ibn Taymiyyah says, he showed that in, the, in this verse, all these actions are done through angels because the angels actually recite the Quran to the Prophet And then the Prophet listened to Jibreel uh, al recitation and then Prophet do not hasten, listen first, and then recite after. And likewise, the story of Yusuf and the other stories of Musa, Naqusu means Allah does it through the angels. You see, the tabir is through the angels. It is not an individual action. You see? So likewise, in whenever Allah, you, it has a different meaning. And in this verse, it is not Allah who... It, Ibn Sima says this is not a ta'wil, this is not a metaphor. This is not turning away from the apparent meaning, you see. Because the apparent meaning, here, it, this is the apparent meaning. Because it, not only it, it is indicated by the context, but it is also in Arabic, when you do it through someone, and you say, we did it, but through the angel, this is correct, you see, in, uh, this is not a... Uh, a, a ta'wil. People say, oh, but this is a ta'wil. This is not a ta'wil. What Ibn Taymiyyah explains in his book is if the Arabic language supports a meaning, it is not a ta'wil. A ta'wil would be like to say, like the Shia say, a lulu wal marjan, the pearl, and um, they refer to Hassan and Hussein. When the Arab made the Arabic language, they did not make these words to refer to Hassan and Hussein. So this is a metaphor. You see? But if the Arab used a, a certain verse with a meaning, this is not, it has many meanings, and you choose one meaning in this context, this is not a ta'wil. So saying, نَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيد, It means, I am closer through the angels, it is actually the angel. This is not a ta'wil. You see, this is not turning from the apparent meaning towards uh, another meaning. 
And then you see this is the closeness to the angel. Then Mumtazulak ulhaq. This is specific to the, the. Then there are some verses who mention the general closeness to Allah, of, uh, of Allah to the creation. And he quoted this verse in Surah Baqarah. وَإِذَا سَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانٌ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَشْهُدُونَ And when my slaves ask you concerning me, I am indeed near. I respond to the invocation of the supplicants when he calls on me. So let them obey me and believe in me so they might be led aright. So Mumtaz Zulak said, I am Qareeb, meaning I am there. I am there when you invoke me. I am. This is not the meaning of this verse. Likewise, it is narrated in the two Sahih, Verily, you are not invoking one who is deaf or absent. You are only invo invoking one who hears and is near. Because people were invoking loudly. The Prophet said, you are not invoking someone who is deaf or absent. You are invoking one who hears and is near. He whom you are supplicating is nearer to any one of you than the neck of his camel. So here again, Ibn Taymiyyah says, some of the Salaf, they said in these verses, it is proximity of knowledge. You see, they said, some said this, but Ibn Timia said this is the wrong interpretation, but some said this. And there's some of them, they say, but this is still, uh, they're going to say it's not a ta'wil. This is not a metaphor. Because they're going to say the context shows, because in Tabarani it is narrated that the people ask the Prophet should we uh, invoke Allah quietly or loudly? And then this verse was revealed. So they said the context shows it is about listening and answering. You see, they didn't ask him, uh, is Allah on the earth, is Allah's essence on the earth? They asked, and likewise in the hadith in the two sahih, it is about, the, you see, the one uh, invoking him. So they said the context shows it is about Allah's listening to invocation. He didn't say to anybody else, I, I am closer to you at all the time. He only says about the one who is invoking Allah. So they're saying the context here shows that... Um, uh, it is about uh, being, uh, listening to the invocation and li uh, 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 so it means Allah is with them in knowledge. So they say, still this Allah says it's not a ta'wil or some would say it's a ta'wil but it is justified by the Quran. It is not like the ta'wil of the Jahmiyyah because Allah said in the Quran, Allah is above his harsh and this one say, um, I am close. So to combine between the two apparent meanings, we're going to say this one is by knowledge and this is not like the Jahmiya. But Ibn Taymiyyah says, some say this, but for Ibn Taymiyyah, he says the right meaning here, it is not, uh, he, he say, being close is not being close in, with the knowledge because in, in the Arabic language, this is not like al maya being with. Because being with, in Arabic, it means al-musahab al-mutlaqa, being companionship absolute. Sometimes being with, ana ma ma Ma'akum, it can be by knowledge, in the context. Someone, it can be with the support, like he says to Musa and Harun, inani ma'akuma. And sometimes it can be for physical uh, uh, unity. But in the Arabic language, the word ma'a, it has all this meaning. You see, and then the context shows if the meaning implied is by the knowledge, like the Salaf explained we've seen before. You see, when Allah said uh, uh, ma'akum, it means with his knowledge. Sometimes it means with his support. And sometimes in the Arabic language, Ma'a can mean physically there. We can do this uh, after the prayer. Because I have to finish this argument after the prayer, maybe. Okay. Half an hour. So definitely, what that is going to be for next month. So basically, what we're saying, Ibn Taymiyyah said some of the Salaf and some of the Khalaf from the Ahlul Hadith, they said in these verses, I am close, meaning, and Ibn Hussain says as well in his explanation of Vasitiya, some scholars say, I am close, meaning, uh, with this knowledge. But they say, no, the, the word Karib, in fact, is a some said, and they say it's not a ta'wil, or it is a ta'wil, but not like the ta'wil of the, 
Jahmiya, because we are not doing a tawil with the Rai or with the, our intelligence, we're doing because. But this is, for Ibn Timah, there's no tawil in it, you see. He says in his hadith, Shar Nuzul, he said, it is not said about this that he is near with his knowledge and his power, because his knowledge of everything and power of everything. And the people did not inquire and ask about that, this. You see, the Asbab and Nuzul, the context, the people didn't ask about Allah's proximity the, or Allah's essence proximity. They only about, ask about his nearness to those who invoke him and call him. You see, and then Ibn Timir says, this is because Allah is close to the heart of the one who invokes him. He is thus nearer to him than he, the neck of his camel. So he's saying this closeness is in the heart of the believer. When the believer calls, this is what the Prophet said in Hadith, the clorer, the closest someone is, is in prayer, is in sujood, the closest to Allah. So this closeness is the closeness in, it's not the physical closeness of uh, uh, Allah, it is the closeness in the one who invokes Allah in his heart. When he remembers Allah, uh, Allah is closest to him as well, when you, uh, out of remembrance. And Ibn Timiya says, because in other hadith, there is mention of Allah's closeness and it is uh, uh, the closeness of his essence, like Allah uh, uh, descending on the third of the night, on the day of the Harafah and other Places. This is the, uh, the, uh, the, the closeness of the essence. But in this verse, is, uh, in the Hadith, the, cl the closeness mentioned about everyone, it is everyone invoking him. Or in such that it is not said about those not invoking him or those uh, uh, not. Uh, so this is said in this context, and this is the apparent meaning. This is not a time where we're not resorting to any d distortion. So further on, we have not clarified the closeness of Allah. The Qurba Mumtazul Haq said, uh, Allah said, Inni qarib, meaning I am there. I mean, strange. How can you say I'm close, meaning I am there? <laughs> and then he quoted other verses. He said, وَهُوَ اللَّهُ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَفِي الْأَرْضِ يَعْلَمُ سِرَّكُمْ وَجَهْرَكُمْ وَيَعْلَمُ مَا تَكْسِبُونَ and also, uh, this is in Surah Al-An'am, verse number three. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَهُوَ اللَّهُ الَّذِي فِي السَّمَاءِ إِلَهٌ وَفِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَهُ وَهُوَ الْحَكِيمُ الْعَلِيمُ This is in Surah Zukhruf. So in the first one, Allah says, وَهُوَ اللَّهُ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَفِي الْأَرْضِ He's Allah in the heavens and on the earth. يَعْلَمُ سِرَّكُمْ He knows what you conceal and what you reveal. And he knows what you earn. Again, I'm going to quote... Mufti Muhammad Shafi in his Ma'arif al-Quran, third volume, page 301. I invite the Dehub and the layman to Google this and take this from their great uh, scholar. He, uh, and compare the explanation by him and the one by Mumtazul Haq. Mumtazul Haq says the verse, wa huwa Allah fi samawati wa fi lard, and the verse, wa huwa, wa huwa allazi fi sama ilahu wa fi lardi ilah, means Allah is in the heavens and Allah is on, on, on the earth. Subhanallah, no, he, and the, I mean, every person of intelligence, he's not quoting any Imams of Tafsir, Ibn Abbas, Mujahid, any standard book of Tafsir. He's just doing a Tafsir with his own, uh, with the Ibn Arabi influence, the Batini school of thought influence. You can see, I mean, when someone is bringing you Tafsir, he's not quoting any of the Salaf. Even his own scholars, they said about the verse, وَهُوَ اللَّهُ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَفِي الْأَرْضِ The third verse con contains the consequential outcome of what was said in the first two verses, meaning of the first two verses of Surah Al-Anam. He said, it declares that Allah is the only being who is worthy of worship and obedience in all the heavens and the earth. So for Mufti Shafi Usmani, وَهُوَ اللَّهُ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَفِي الْأَرْضِ He is Allah in the heavens and the earth. It does not mean that Allah's essence is in the heaven and the earth, but it means He is the only being who is worthy of worship in all the heavens and on the earth. SubhanAllah, look at the totally, one is the explanation of, of Tawhid and one is the explanation of the Jahmiyyah and the explanation of Ibn Arabi and Al-Hallaj and Rumi and all others. 
Subhanallah, this is a school of thought, you see, this is not coming out of the blue. The explanation Mumtazul Haq gave was not of his own. This is the school of thought of Wahdatul Wujud of Ibn Arabi. And inshallah, we will see Fusus al Hikam and all others that this is the result of their sayings. And likewise, I mean, what here it is to mention that Ibn Kathir said the scholars have two explanations of this verse in Surah al anam But they said they both reject the saying of the Jahmiyyah that Allah is by essence on the heavens and earth. Ibn Kathir say, some of the Salaf, they say, wa huwa Allahu fi samawat, stop. Allah is fi samawat, meaning above the heavens. And then they carry on, wa fil ardi ya'lamu sidrakum wa jahrakum. And in the heaven and on the earth, he knows your secret and your... Uh, so th th they made the sentence differently. And he said, no, some of the Salaf, they said, well, well, uh, Allah is the worship in the heavens and the earth. Stop. These are two explanations. Tabari, he preferred the explanation, well, well, Stop. He is Allah by essence above the arsh. Well, this is, I mean, both of... Um, this tafsir can be true, but they both rejected the explanation of Mumtazul Haq, that Allah is in the heaven by essence and on the earth by essence. And likewise about the verse, wa huwa allazi fi sama ilahu wa fil ardi ilah. This is the translation of a Ma'rif al-Quran. He's the one who's God to be worshipped in the sky and God to be worshipped on the earth. So this is the own English translation of the Quran. It does not mean wa huwa allazi it does not it does not mean that the essence of Allah is on the earth of the heaven. It means he's the, the one who is to be worshipped, the one who has the right of worship on the heavens and on the earth. So this is the explanation of all the salaf. Then we come, he, he mentioned the verses about Allah being with the creation. So he said, meaning Allah's essence is everywhere. And we've mentioned before Ibn Abdel Bar and many other books of the Salaf, they said Allah is with them with his knowledge. And this is not, again, like Ibn Timmah said, this is not a ta'wil. Because in the Arabic, the word ma'a, with, it is used for musahab al-mutlaqa, for absolute companionship. You see? Even in other languages, if someone says, I am with Obama, or I am with, um, what's the other name? Uh, Mitt Romney. I am with him. It doesn't mean I'm physically with him. You see? Or, or if I say, I am with Manchester. It doesn't mean I am, or I am with Liverpool. It means I'm supporting him with, I mean, or I am with this group, meaning I support them, I give them money. It doesn't mean... I am mixed with him in all languages. The word with is used for many, and this is not a ta'wil, you see. Ibn Jarir Tabari, Ibn Abd al -Bar, they all said about this, Sufyan Athari, Ibn Masud, many others said, he's above the throne and nothing is hidden from him in the explanation of this verse. And likewise in Surah Al-Mujadala. And they said, do you not see that Allah at the beginning mentioned knowledge, and at the end he finished with knowledge. Wallahu bi ma basir. And he said, he knows what is in the heaven, what is on the earth, what comes from the earth. And likewise in Surah Al-Mujadala, Alam tara anna Allah ya'lamu ma fi samawati ma fi lard. So Allah is speaking about his knowledge and composing every place. There is no ma'ikun min ajwa thalathatin illa huwa rabihum wa la khamsatin illa huwa sadisum wa la adna min thalika wa la akthara illa huwa ma'am ayna ma kanu. Thumma yunabihum bima amilu yama al-qimata inna Allah bi kulli shayna alim. Allah started the words with knowledge, he finishes with knowledge. This is what the Salaf said in their book. ad dahak and um, Ibn Masud, uh, Sufyan Thorim, all the, uh, the uh, Tabari mentions uh, all these uh, sayings of uh, the Sahaba and others. And likewise, Mumtazul Haq, when he uses the verse, he didn't bring Ibn Abbas, he didn't bring Ibn Masud, he didn't bring any of the standard Tafsir, Bahawi Tafsir of the Salaf. Now we have two more verses. He says, uh, Mumtaz, who quoted the verse, 
وَلِلَّهِ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ To Allah belongs the east and the west. فَأَيْنَمَا تُوَلُّ فَثَمَّ وَجْهُ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَاسِيٌ عَلِيمٌ To Allah belongs the east or west, so wherever you turn yourselves or your faces, there is the watch of Allah. And he says, meaning everywhere you turn your face, there is Allah. And here again, Ibn Taymiyyah, he mentions in his um, Majmu Fatah, he said, because he, 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 when he wrote his Aqid al Wasitiyah, he spent some years in jail. People debated uh, with him about the attributes and then he, he showed them that what he wrote in his wasitiyah was not his own sayings, but supported by the early scholars of all mazahib, not only the Hanbalis. And then when he was debating these people in Egypt, he said, bring me one saying of the scholars in which they do ta'wil. And they said, they've been looking for years and once one of them came to me and said, I will, in, uh, Imam al-Bayhaqi, in his Asma wa Sifat, mentioned that فَأَيْنَمَا تُبَلُّ فَثَمَّ وَجْهُ اللَّهِ Wherever you turn, there is the face of Allah, um, there is وَجْهُ اللَّهِ He said, Imam Shafi and Al-Mujahid, the student of Ibn Abbas, they said, وَجْهُ اللَّهِ means قِبْلَةُ اللَّهِ And they said to Ibn Tamiya, oh, we have shown to you one narration, the Salaf, did ta'wil. And Ibn Tamiya answered to them, they said, this is not a ta'wil. Because in this verse, Waj in Arabic, it is used for direction as well. And he said, this is well known, this is not a ta'wil. Waj sometimes is used for the attributes of Allah. He, say, he says, like some people have heard, he says, some words, in some contexts, they use as an attribute, and in other places, they're not used as an attribute of Allah. And he says, in this verse, it is not because in some places, Waj Allah is used as an attribute, that everywhere it should be used as, a, as an attribute. Then we're going to stop for the Azan. Uh, he's going to carry on after the Azan and carry on talking till 7 o'clock to the Iqamah. And then we're going to do the question and answer session after the Salat al Isha, inshallah. Ta'ala. So I will finish the, with the last two verses. And uh, at the end, it's going to be the biggest doubt uh, brought by Mumtaz al Haq. So here, Ibn Taymiyyah said to the person who has been looking for Tawil, he said, he says, this verse, this is at all not about dealing with the attributes of Allah. And the person said, Is there not the mention of the word in it? He said, yeah. But the meaning is Qiblatullah. And Ibn Timah said, this is known in the Arabic language. فَإِنَّ الْوَجْهَ هُوَ الْجِهَا فِي اللُّغَةِ الْعَرَبِ يَقُولُ قَسَّتُ هَذَا الْوَجْهِ فَسَفَرْتُ إِلَى هَذَا الْوَجْهِ أي هذه الجهة When in Arabic you said I travel to this wajh it means to this direction it is not a ta'wil in, in this verse according to Ibn Taymiyyah we are not dealing with an attribute of Allah so Imam Shafi'i and Imam Mujahid did not do any ta'wil so why did Mumtaz Haq doesn't he trust Imam Shafi? Doesn't he say you disrespect the Imams, but who are turning away from their explanation to the explanation that Allah is everywhere? And Ibn Tamiya said the context shows it because Allah says uh, uh, in, uh, later on, He said, For every nation there is a direction to which they turn their face. So he says, when you look at the context, in, in, in another verse after this one, Allah mentions the direction, Wijhatullah. So here he mentioned Waj, and another after verse he mentions Wijhatullah. And Wij, Wijha is for the direction. So he said the two verses are very close to each other. Wijhatullah wa muwalliha, and the verse, fa'inna matuwallu fathama wajhallah. And he said, if we look at the context, Allah says before, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ Meaning all the directions belong to him. Uh, they are the directions. You see, the east, the west, they all belong to him. So Allah is speaking about uh, the directions, not about his attribute of face. And he says that this attribution here, قِبْلَةُ wajula, it is an idhafa uh, tashrif, meaning it is like saying the house of Allah and the camel of Allah. It is attributing to him the... All the direction, they belong to Allah. 
And here he said, Qiblatullah, Wajullah means the direction of Allah. It is attribute to Allah, but it is not an attribute. It is like saying, the house of Allah or the camel of Allah. But then he says, some of the Salaf, they said, okay, the meaning is Qibla. Here, Wajullah means Qiblatullah, but it means that Allah's essence is um, encompassing the, uh, 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 all uh, the universe. We're going to see after in the last dub. And they said, okay, we accept that. Um, but they said, Allah is speaking about his attributes. Ibn Taymiyyah says, some of the Salaf, they still said it is about the attribute of Allah, the attribute of faith. But it is like in the Hadith, that when one of you is standing in prayer, Allah is in front of him. And we're going to see, inshallah, this in the, the last part, that wherever you are, Allah's essence is in front of you. This is in reality. This is not a metaphor. So still for Ibn Taymiyyah in this verse, this is not the attribute of Allah. They say some understood it to be attribute of Allah, but they say it's Qiblatullah, but it means wherever you stand, Allah's face will be in front of you in reality, not in metaphor. So I'm coming now to the last point, and it is Mumtazulak make a circle like this. And he said, the Salafi, they say Allah is above the arsh. The one who is on this side of the arsh, he's going to be pointing at this side. The one who is above, he's going to be pointing at this side. So this is a contradiction. But Ibn Sheikh al-Islam Ibn Timah, because he was debating with these people, he has written answers to all of them. And the answer is clear to this one. He has wrote a risala in his majmul fatawa, risala al-arsh wa lihata, but Allah encompassing everything. And the answer is in Sahih Bukhari. You see, all our answers, they're not in Fusus al-Hikam. Our answers are in Sahih Bukhari. And this is again mentioned by Imam Bukhari in Kitab Tawheed, in the chapter about Allah's hand. You see, Imam Bukhari is speaking about the attribute of Allah's hand. A Jew came to the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Oh Muhammad, Allah will hold the heaven in, on, one, on a finger, the mountain on a finger, and the trees on a finger, and all the creation on a finger. Then he will say, I am the king. On that, Allah's apost, uh, uh, Prophet smiled, with his premolar teeth be, be, became visible. And then he recited, they did not es have estimated, ju no just estimate have they made of Allah, such as due to him. Meaning they have not estimated Allah as uh, he should have been. Abdullah ibn Masood added, Allah's ap apostle smiled, meaning at the Jews, expressing his wonder and believe in what he said. Tasdiqan. So he's saying that uh, the Prophet Sallallahu when the Jews said, did the Prophet smiled, approving what they said. And this is again mentioned in Kitab Tawheed, wa al Jahmiyyah. This narration refutes the Jahmiyyah. You see? Inna Allah yamsiku samawati ala isba'in. And then Abdullah ibn Masood said, Meaning the Prophet loved approving his tasdiq lahu. So this is mentioned by Imam Bukhari. In the chapter, Bab Ta'ala Lima Khalaqtu Biyadei. People are saying, oh, the hands of Allah should metaphorical. The Salaf did not understand the meaning. They just read it without interpreting. Why would Imam Bukhari mention the hadith about Allah holding the trees on one finger in the chapter Lima Khalaqtu Biyadei? Meaning, I have created Adam with my hands. So for him, he understood the meaning of hands, and he understood the meaning of fingers in connecting them together. He didn't say, oh, it doesn't have a meaning. But the meaning why I'm quoting this is, if all the heavens and the earth are in Allah's hands, Ibn Taymiyyah says, they're all in Allah's hands at this time on judgment day. So if someone is pointing above, he's gonna point at Allah's essence, someone is pointing down, it's still because all the heavens and the earth, they're gonna be in Allah's hands. So Allah's essence will be encompassing. And Ibn Taymiyyah, when he speaks about this, he says, one, we should know 
that this wall compared to the Kursi Harsh, it is very minuscule. There is an authentic hadith about this narrated by uh, Ibn Abi Shaba and Bayhaq in Asma'u Sifat. He said the Kursi, obviously Allah said about his Kursi that encompasses the heavens and the earth. And then this hadith says, the seven heavens and the seven earth are by the side of the Kursi, but like a ring thrown into a desert. Meaning all the seven he heavens and the earth is like a ring thrown in this compact to the Kursi. In, and such is the Kursi with the throne. So it's like a, the Kursi is like a ring compared to the throne in the desert. And like what the creation compared to the Kursi is like a ring in the desert. So Allah is above this. And Ibn Tamir ha has a lengthy discussion about this. In his Risala, uh, uh, I'll carry on after the prayer. Inshallah, I, I'll just mention this after the prayer before the question answers. Because this is ex explaining this. Ibn Timia gives many ex examples to explain Allah's ihata. Oh, and uh, Inshallah, it will be beneficial. Okay, we'll stop here now. And uh, we're going to do the Salah. And Inshallah, we'll resume after Salah to the Isha, bi'idhnillah. So we mentioned previously the hadith in Sahih Bukhari in which Allah will hold all the creation in one is the different parts of the creation in different fingers and then he will ask who is the king. So at this time, Ibn Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah explained this in his uh, Risala Fil Arshia and Waliyahata in volume uh, uh, 6 of his Majmu Fatawa, it is present there. So basically, I mean, one principle, I mean, people, they think they're very clever and they're making circles and they want to speak about Allah with their sense of mathematics, uh, geographics or astrophysics. But can they, like Allah said, they cannot estimate Allah, give him the right estimate, you see. How can you speak about Allah making signs and like sometimes some people say, Oh, but if Allah descends in the last third of the night, in one part of the earth is day, the other is night, so he'll be always doing nuzul. But this is when you compare Allah's essence with your essence. What is impossible for you is not impossible for Allah. Like they say, oh, but if he, he does nuzul, his earth is empty. No. The scholars, they said, his same time on his earth, same time he does nuzul. So first, one has to understand that Allah laysa kamithli hishay. Nothing is comparable to him. So saying, making the earth like a circle, saying, oh, but if you say this, and with your limited intelligence, trying to deny the agreed upon meaning of the Quran, Hadith of the Salaf, that Allah is upon his harsh, this shows the limit of your intelligence. Not only you turn away from the clear sayings of the book, the clear saying of the Hadith, the Prophet on the, uh, on the Hajj pointed to the sky, uh, uh, saying, Allah mashhad, I have I transmitted. You deny all these texts, all the sayings of the Salaf, of the, even the Hanafis, of Imam Tahawi, just because of your limited intelligence, making a circle saying, oh, but if Allah is the one who is on this side of the earth, is pointing, is this side, but if Allah on the other is pointing, this is ridiculous. And, this has been answered by Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah because he's been debating and all these doubts, they're ancient. You see, they're not new. He said, in his uh, Majmu Fatawa, what Quran and Hadith show is that if Allah wants, he holds, meaning the, 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 the heavens and the earth, as he would do it on judgment day. And if he wants, he doesn't do it. He's capable of doing it. This is on judgment day. He will hold the heaven and earth in this manner. You see, Imam Bukhari, he mentioned this hadith about Allah holding the heavens and the earth in his hand in Kitab Tawhid wa Radal al Jahmiyyah and in the chapter of Allah's hand. So for him, he understood the meaning of hand and he understood that his hand had uh, fingers and Allah will hold the creation in this finger. So Ibn Timah says, Allah will definitively, it is told by Quran and hadith that Allah will hold the heaven and hearts in his hand. But before he's capable of it and he can hold it in a different manner, I mean, in any way. So when this is possible on judgment day, that Allah is holding everything in his heaven and earth. So someone who is pointing on this side of the earth is still 
Allah is going to still be above the first, seventh, second, third, and the one who is above is still because Allah's hand is encompassing all the creation. But separated from it and outside from it, it's not mixed with it. So Ibn Taymiyyah said, He said, if Allah is capable of holding his head and opening it like a ball, Allah, uh, no, Sheikh al-Islam is going to give the, uh, the, uh, some examples to, because they say, if something is possible for the creation, how can you deny it with Allah? But we don't say Allah's holding is like the holding of the creation. But what he wants to say, what you see as a contradiction is not a contradiction for the creation. Wallillahi al Allah, Allah has the highest example. We don't say it is like him. And he says that Allah is holding the heaven and the earth contains and compensing, you see, ihata in all cases. And Allah is separated from the creation and is not mixed. And he said, it is known to us that if one of us, and Allah has the highest example, if he has a mustard seed in his hand, if he wants to hold it, he can hold it and compense the mustard seed. And if he wants, he does not hold it and puts it under him. In both cases, it is separate from him. So Allah's holding the heaven and earth does not mean Allah is mixed in it. He said when for the creation, a human being holds a mustard seed or a peanut or chickpea, it doesn't mean you're mixed with it or you're inside it. Uh, you, you're mixed with, you're in the jugular veins or you're uh, in the houses. And secondly, if Allah wants to hold it, he holds it. If he wants, he leaves it. And he's, in both cases, he's separate from it. He says, if the earth at all time, Allah didn't say if it is, the course is encompassing all the heavens and the earth. But if the earth is encompassing from all sides and Allah is above it, encompassing at all time, some people objected to Ibn Taymiyyah, why are you seeking Allah above and not below or right or left? Why do you then seek Allah above? Because if you seek Allah below, Ibn Taymiyyah said, no, this is wrong. Because seeking above is closer. The angel, when they fly up to Allah, they, want to, they go straight, you see, they don't perform a hole on the earth, go on the other side and then go uh, uh, in the atmosphere on the first heaven from the other side. Or they don't go right or left. And he said, if someone seeks Allah left or below with the meaning of Hulu, meaning he's seeking Allah below, but with the meaning that above the earth on the other side and millions and millions, he's seeking Allah below or right or left. It is like someone who comes from Morocco, Maghreb, from this side, and he wants to do Hajj, but he first goes to Khorasan, to Iran, and then he goes to Mecca. He says, this seeking of Allah is not correct. It is incomplete and against fitrah. This is opposing fitrah because the seeker, the seeker seeks his beloved from the closest way. If someone turns to Allah from a longer way and he turns away from the closest way, his desire is not correct. And, and this contradicts his fitrah. You see, he has gathered two opposite desires. His desire to seek Allah and, uh, and he then seeking it from a further way, it's contradicting it. Then he said, if a person loves the Prophet, he would take the shortest way to him. If someone wants to travel at the time, let's suppose of the Prophet, you're going to take the shortest way to travel to him. If your love is dubious, meaning mutaraddid, and you doubt, he would take the longer way, like someone whose intelligence calls to the Prophet, but inside his desire has some doubts and his, his call to his uh, shahwa and others. This is, la I mean, if someone says, if Allah is encompassing at all time, why don't you seek him above? See, if you don't seek him above, it means your fitrah either is corrupted or your desire is incomplete. Likewise, for calling someone and invoking him, he calls him from the closest way, and this, uh, else your aim is not fulfilled and is incomplete. He says, if, let's just suppose for the creation, it's not the same for Allah. We don't say it's the same. If someone is in a higher place or building, and you want to call him, you will face him and call him. You won't put your head in a well, and then you will call him. You see, this is only done with a weak intent. If so, you want to call someone above, but you put your head in a well, this is the example given by Ibn Taymiyyah. So again, if someone wants to speak to someone, if someone wants to speak to the moon, if such was possible, just 
I mean, Ibn Timah gives the examples. And the moon is above him and in front of him at the same time. The fitrah would tell him to face the moon. It won't tell him to turn his back and say, oh, but it's still above me, so it will still reach him. So Sharia came to confirm the fitrah. People, uh, only the people of shirk, shirk, they corrupt the fitrah of the people. And only someone whose desire to, to uh, turning to Allah is not complete would do so. Also, the Prophet said in an agreed upon hadith, people should stop raising their eyes in prayers or their eyesight will not return to them. And all the scholars agree that looking at the sky is forbidden in prayer, not at all time. And Ibn Timur says, so if raising the eyes to the sky is forbidden, and there is no divinity above the sky, there would be no difference between raising the eyes to the sky in all directions. So I'm just going to finish with what Ibn Timur basically explained in, in this Risala. Then if people say, oh, but because Ibn Timur spoke before that the heavens and the earth, what the Quran had is said, they're spherical. You see, the first heaven, second heaven above. This is what has been said, he said, by the scholars of the Salaf and others. The Qur'an is encompassing the heaven and the earth. But for the Arsh, we don't know its exact shape. There's a hadith in Abu Dawud I've quoted, saying it has the shape of a dome, but it is weak. But there are other texts showing that it is. But if the Arsh is spherical, someone will say, but what you are implying is Allah himself is spherical. And Ibn Temes says, no. He says, if someone has a chickpea in his hand, or a boy uh, is playing with a ball in his hand. It's just for an example for the creation. Does it mean that the boy or yourself in the chickpea, you, you're spherical? He says, so how can you say Allah is spherical? So these are all the dog. I mean, Ibn Taymiyyah clarified this, that Allah is above the seven heavens. On the day of judgment, he will definitely hold the heavens and the earth in his hands, like you told by uh, the Prophet Sallallahu and like Imam Bukhari used his narration to refute the Jahmiya, and seeking him on that time, and before we don't know, but if we suppose the Arsh is encompassing and Allah's essence is encompassing all the time, this would refute Mumtazullah's claim. I mean, how can they just make some claims and deny what is, I mean, agreed upon by Kitab Sunnah, by the Fitrah, and even their small uh, uh, making circles, this does not oppose it. So definitely, I mean, Allah is above. For the one who is on this side of the earth, Allah is still above him. For the one who is on the other side, Allah is still going to be above him. How can you say because this is impossible for human body, so it will be impossible for Allah? Like saying, oh, but if Allah descends the third part of the night and one country is day and the other is night, how can he... Do? This is because you're comparing Allah to the creation. You're saying for, Allah, for the creation it's impossible to be... When we say he's above, his direction is hulu. It's not, ju you see, we said the direction Allah is above the heavens and the earth, above, the direction absolute aboveness. We don't say he's only above here and not above there. So this is how Ibn Timur refuted them. And this is um, clear for, I mean, for whoever, I mean, Allah has, give, has given intelligence. And inshallah, so we will stop here for the lecture. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad and mullah ala Muhammad. كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد and inshallah I mean if Allah gives us life and strength we will carry on and show the real creed of these people of Ibn Arabi they say Ismail Haqi they say because Allah's presence everywhere those who worship idols only worship Allah those who worship calf only they all go to paradise Allah is in the human being but human being saying I am Allah Haq this is true Allah's presence everywhere and this is what we will see, inshallah, in a further lecture. I mean, it's a lengthy topic, but in this topic, I just wanted to refute all the arguments of uh, Mumtaz al Haq and clarify, I mean, for the Deobandi layman, for them to ponder why Mufti Shafi Usman is giving this tafsir, why Mumtaz al Haq is giving this, why the Salaf, Imam Bukhari, Tirmizi Abu Dawood, they say Allah fuqa archihi ilmu huwa qudratu fi kulli makan, and why Mumtaz al Haq says no, and why, I mean, the Salaf. They use, uh, they, they use the expression بَائِنَنَا uh, خَلْقِهِ or بِذَاتِهِ So, I mean, we just invoke Allah to guide us and also the Deobandi layman for them, I mean, so they uh, can reflect and abandon the taqlid of the elders and come to the way of the Salaf, of the way of Tawhid and Sunnah. وَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا Okay, we're going to go through some of the questions that we got here uh, quickly. Um, the first question is, is Zahid al-Qawthari a Diobandi? 
Is Al Khosri still alive now? And is he a follower of Ibn Arabi? Uh, basically, I mean, Zahid Al Khosri is not a Deobandi scholar, but he's one of the Tur Tur Turkish Turkmen country from Asia. He's a Hanafi scholar, but his ta'asu for the Hanfi Mazhab, the way he would insult the other, I mean, it is similar to the uh, school of Deoban. He will do all these strange explanations uh, to, to, to reject authentic hadith, and he would be a Sufi Naqshabandi, like them, the Deobandi, they are Naqshabandi and Chisti. So, uh, obviously, he would come openly and insult the Imams. You see, of telling Imam Malik is criminal, Hafiz Ibn Najjar will go to prostitute, Dara Kutni and others, they are Mujassim, they are anthropomorphist and whatever. But Deobandi, they follow him a little bit, but they're trying to show that they are not the same, but in fact, I mean, they're very close. And obviously, he's not alive. Yeah, he's dead. I mean, personally, I haven't come to his writing on Tasawwuf. He has a book about uh, Tasawwuf in his. Uh, and others, because he's Naqshabandi, most of the later Naqshabandis, I mean, like Abdurrahman al Jami, he's done an explanation of Fusus al Hikam. So, I mean, this is just to say that most of them, I mean, the later Naqshabandi, Shazili, they're all gonna be up on the school of uh, Ibn Arabi, they're gonna call them, refer to them, and call him Sheikh al Akbar. And, but I don't know direct quote, but. The next question is Did Zakaria Kandului? Repent for the books such as Tabliki Nisab, and if so, where can I find this evidence? Is Ibn Arabi mentioned in Fazal Amal? Uh, I mean, I have personally no, uh, I mean, I didn't come up anything, even Diobandi or Salafi, Elul Hadith, any scholar saying he, he repented from his uh, Fazal Amal, I mean, it still was sold and spread and never heard about this. And obviously, Ibn Arabi is mentioned in Fazal Amal. He mentions in many places, like the murid should be like a dead body. I've heard this from some scholars. I mean, the murid with the sheikh should be like a dead body. That's what Ibn Arabi says. And he also mentions, I mean, in many places, in his Fazal Amal, some stories related to uh, Wahdatul Wujud. And inshallah, the next time we will quote some, he mentioned some sayings of Rashid Ahmed Gungui that I am a liar, I'm not seeing, speaking to his sheikh, uh, I am not seeing, uh, you, uh, I mean, I am only your shadow, you and me is shirk upon shirk. So he's saying, saying you and me is shirk upon shirk, we are not seeing, and it is only Allah, we're only Allah's shadows, and there are many in Fazal Sadaqat and many others, some clear references to of, uh, the creed of Wahdatul Wujud that uh, Allah is present everywhere. Uh, the next question is, which book do you advise the one who is a beginner in Aqidah with? Uh, I mean, uh, the one, I mean, the, the book of uh, relating to the one they do in Pakistan, I mean, they have, um, Obviously, Fathul Majid, a kitab to hide with Fathul Majid in the Durus. As small as Fath, they have Aqidah was first. You see? So I don't know exactly how inside the university if they have preliminaries. Uh, uh, no, even in Pakistan, first they, they have a book of Ibn Semin, Aqidatul Muslim, something, a name like this, small one. And then they have uh, uh, Al Wasitiya. So uh, obviously, I mean, Wasitiya, I've seen in English a good explanation, obviously, of fate of Ibn Semin in two volumes. I mean, it's very easy, it's simple, and, and it speaks about all the attributes. You see, what I've mentioned about the nearness of Allah, he also mentions it, and Ibn Taymiyyah, and he gives simple and clear examples. So obviously, I mean, Aqid al-Wastiya is always a good, uh, short, I mean, book, and all comprising, I mean, Tahawiyas, some of the topics are very complicated. I mean, obviously, beginner, he will struggle to. Uh, next question, is Allah on his throne or above it? I mean, uh, all these meanings, they're the same, I mean, on and above, I mean, the Salaf, they use the ala large, focal large, you see, so all the meanings, uh, they're the same, I mean, I don't know, I mean, where, uh, on and above, I mean, what's the difference exactly, <laughs> but... Okay, uh, did any of the Salaf refute Tafweed or the Sifat of Allah, of the Sifat of Allah, where did Tafweed come from? 
I've heard that the madhab of the Salaf is to make tathabbut of the istinbat. What does this mean? Can you explain all of these terminologies? Yeah, basically, I mean, tafwid, I mean, this is what the later scholars, they said, they said the Salaf did tafwid, meaning they said, don't do tawil. Like Imam Tirmiz in his Sunan, he say, it is the jahmiya, they say the hand of Allah means the power of uh, Allah. And then he mentioned Isaac ibn Rahu as saying, no, we do not say that the hand of Allah is the power of Allah. It is like Allah's hearing, seeing. We do not say, he said tashbih, meaning anthropomorphism, is only to say that uh, Allah's hand is like the hand of the creation. Like to say Allah's hearing and seeing is like the creation's hearing and seeing. Hearing and seeing. So basically, the Salaf, they mentioned the attributes and they denied in their books that will. We do not say the hand of Allah means the power of Allah. But some of them, they said, oh, but they just for better will, but they left the meaning, they didn't give any meaning. So the hand of Allah, they didn't know what it means. Well, you can see, Imam, if they didn't understand, why would Imam Bukhari in the chapter of the hand of Allah mention the hadith of Allah holding the heaven on us? on his fingers. So obviously they understood the meaning of what the hand is. It is known to anybody, you see. The, the hand of Allah has fingers, but it is not like the hand of the creation, you see. So the Salaf didn't do tafwid of it. They didn't say, I don't know what the meaning is. Obviously, people who say the Salaf did tafwid, do, do you then say that Allah, because Isaac ibn Rahawa, in, like mentioned in uh, Sunan Tirmizi, he linked the attribute of hand to the attribute of hearing and seeing. He say for hearing and seeing, I mean, it is the same with Allah's attribute of hand. So the people who say the Salaf did tafwid of the Sifat, do they mean as well that they didn't know what seeing and hearing means? That the one they speak about Allah was Sami al Basir? No, we don't know what it means. So <laughs> this is, I mean, totally illogical. This is attributing ignorance to the Salaf. Maybe you should you. Ibn Arabi and others, Kufar, I mean, apostate, the halaj, they're ignorant. But our uh, aslaf, our uh, pious ancestors, they were not ignorant of the meanings. And they used this hadith, Ibn Majah, Abu Dawud, the hadith of Allah's foot, putting his foot on the hell, uh, 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 Allah's uh, attributes on, uh, of hands, and other attributes, they put them in their books, refuting the Jahmiya. You see, in the chapters, is. Bab fil jahmiya, bab fi man karatil jahmiya. So if they didn't have any meanings, these hadith for them, why would they put them in a refuting someone? Can you refute someone with a, something you say, I don't know what the, his, its meaning is? I mean, them, the, the uh, people who are saying salaf do tough ways, it's totally, I mean, uh, illogical. Well, it's to make that a bit of this bad. Wow. I don't know myself what it is, that's a bit of this thing bad. Uh, next question is, uh, could you say what Imam Abu Hanifa said about where is Allah? I mean, Imam Abu Hanifa, he said himself, but you see, because it is not directly quoted, you see, Mandabi mentioned it in his uh, Kitab al Hulu. But the, the only thing is, because it is not directly mentioned in this book, uh, in his own book of Abu Hanifa, you see the people will say, oh, but this is, the, this Nad has this, or the one who wrote this. So basically, Imam Abu Hanifa, there are many narrations in Imam Hafiz Zahabi mentioned from him, and others have mentioned that he also said the same, that if someone says, uh, I don't know where my Lord is, Imam Abu Hanifa say, you are kafir. Oh, you don't know where your Lord is. Allah clearly said Allah is above the heavens, uh, above his earth. And then someone came to him and said, but if I say Allah is above the arsh, but I don't know if his arsh is above the heavens or on the earth. He said, then you are kafir as well. This saying is well known from Abu Hanifa, and it is quoted by Ibn Abi Layz al Hanafi in his Sharta Hawiyah, uh, and many other scholars. But the only reason I haven't quoted, I mean, because you see, these people, they're always going to do tashkik, putting doubts, and say, oh, but this is not this and that. And unfortunately, I mean, if we had some direct books of, uh, like we have of Imam Bukhari, Abu Hanifa, direct. I mean, the, but Imam Tahawi says that Allahu muhaytun bi khalqihi wa fawqahu. You see, Allah encompasses, like Ibn Timiyah said, on the, uh, this is the meaning of ihata, you see. So, uh, uh, 
encompasses the creation and is above it, encompassing not being mixed with it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses the creation but is above it. So Imam Tahawi, I don't know how, the, I mean, they're still going to find some strange excuses, but I mean, he's the highest reference and it is his own book, I mean. Uh, the question here is, what is the belief of Ahl Sunnah of where Allah is? I mean, all these quotes that I mean, I've quoted maybe four, five, six uh, books of the Salaf, the belief is clear. I mean, they say we all agree. Like Imam al Ozai said, we used to say when the, like Imam al Behaqi narrated in a sense, but we used to say when the Tabi'i were many, that Allah is for Qasabah Samawat. You see, he didn't report all some said he said everywhere some, and this is not, they even agree, I mean, they cannot deny it. And like same Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak, it has only great hufaz in it, the one of Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak. When he says, how should we know our Lord? He said, for above the earth, separated from it. So, I mean, this is, I mean, there's even the fitra of an intelligent, I mean, everybody will seek Allah above and, one thing I remember, Mumtaz Ullah saying, oh no, but the fitra tells you feel Allah's presence everywhere. I mean, I don't know if he's uh, having some delusion or, <laughs> or what, or he's saying even the Christians say, the Christians, like uh, quoted by uh, the Salaf, they also say in the Ajil, our Father who is above the heavens. They don't say our Father who is on earth or present everywhere. For them, it's an heresy to say. So I don't know why Mumtaz Ullah says, maybe it's, it's, the, uh, the, it's the, uh, the people of Wahdatul Wujud feel alive everywhere, but none of the Salaf in this uh, ayat or said, we feel the presence of Allah everywhere. The Muhaddi said, we, no, they all point, Prophet Salaam pointed, the Sahaba pointed above the sky, they said, Fi Sama, Fawqa Sama, Zainab bin Jesh used to take pride over the wives of the Prophet, saying, Allah married me, focus upon some of what? She didn't feel uh, well, what they feel. Obviously, we have the feeling of Allah, I, 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 I'm in power and being above the ash. But uh, I mean, uh, I don't know what kind of fitra he's speaking about. It's the, the, the fitra of the people of cash delusion, who, who, the fitra of the people who say, um, Firaun died upon Iman, or the fitra of the people who said the mushriks, that they, they, they were drowned in the ocean of Allah's Ahadiyya unicity, and they were right to worship idols. I mean, this is their fitra, not the fitra of, uh, of anyone in the street you, you can uh, catch. And the last question is, why do they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is everywhere? Basically, I mean, this is what Ibn Taymiyyah says. Ibn Taymiyyah says in his... Um, in his books, he says, Allah never negated in any, I mean, in any text, or the Prophet or the Salaf said, Allah is not above the Arsh. You see, there are some verses saying Allah is above the Arsh, there are some verses saying Allah is with, some saying He is close, but none of the Salaf or the Quran hadith says Allah is not above the Arsh. So, I mean, we ourselves wonder how they can say Allah is everywhere. Did Prophet Salaam said, Allah fi kulli makan? You see, did Allah say, Allah fi kulli makan? So, uh, I mean, basically I've explained to you the reason why they say Allah is everywhere is because they are upon the Batini creed of the school of Wahdatul Wujud. This school, I mean, it started at the time of the, pro, uh, of the Sahaba, and it mixed up the Greek philosophy, the creed of the Medjus and whatever people in these regions. And al halaj spoke about it and others carried on hiding it in the Turuq Sufiya. And Ibn Arabi explained it for them. Allah is present everywhere. Allah is present in the human being. He's present in the jugular vein. For them, everything is Allah. It's only your imagination makes you see as a human being. They have many explanations. We'll see, I mean, that they say, that what you are is only a reflection in the mirror. You don't exist. You don't have an essence. You just, it's like you have one, a person enters a room, he's got 100,000 mirrors. In one of the mirror he'll be eating, in one of the mirror he will be jumping, but they are all his images. So they're saying we, all the creation, we're all the reflection of the same essence. They have other, and this example is the example given by the Christians. They have other uh, explanation. They say like water and uh, snow, ice. 
uh, Abdul Karim Al Jili he gives this explanation. They said the relation between the creation and Allah is the relation like the snow and water. He said it is the same essence, but some will come in the air, some will come with snow, some will come in water. But the, the essence is one. This is what the Christians say exactly about the Trinity. And for the reflection in the mirror, this is what uh, Rahmatullah Hindi he says as well. The Christian, to explain the Trinity, they said the relation father and son is like the relation someone looking at his shadow or the image in a mirror. So this explanation, none of the Salaf gave them. And this because they are in Turuk Sufiya, the Deobandis, Chisti, Naqshbandi and others, they have been taught this by the elders. That uh, you don't exist, there's only one essence, La Mawjuda Illa Allah, there's only Allah's existence, affirming two existences, shirk, like they said in Fazal Sadaqat, you and me, shirk upon shirk. Uh, affirming two existences is shirk upon shirk. There's only one existence. It's only your imagination which, and once you have annihilated all the drugs they're taking to annihilate themselves, then you will see only the essence absolute and at this, I mean, we're going to read all the stories, what Imdadullah Maqi said in Ziyal Qulub, all the universe will be in your control once you buy. You have, he says in it, we're going to see next time, in his Risala, Imdadullah Maqi, that when the Salik, meaning the, the Sufi researcher, wayfarer, they say, he has reached the highest peak, for them it's Wahdatul Wujud Fana, they say he has reached the reality of humanhood, which is Al Uluhiya. And he said, at this time, he knows the truth that the human being, in apparent, he's a human being, he's Allah, he's God in Batin, in himself. So and everything in the heavens and the earth, everything is uh, uh, given control to him. This is, I mean, concept of perfect human in San Kamil. They have lots of fairy tales, but we're going to see. They believe in that Lamaki, that human being, reaches his haqiqa, which is al uluhiya and then he calls other people to this true. But then he said, we should, if Shah Usidra Rububiya Shirk, he said, this secret of lordship should not be divulgated to anyone, to uh, accept the elite. They say, disclosing to everyone is Shirk. And then they say in the other books, you should only give it to Khawas. Like I've said at the beginning, was the Irshad al Muluk? He said, there's a secret knowledge, it's only for the Khawas. The Prophet didn't taught everyone, and then they say, that he taught this secret knowledge to Ali, and like all the Turuk Sufia, they have this, like the Shia, the Batini, Sisila, up to Ali, Radhi. they don't have up to Abu Bakr, Omar, or Uthman. And they said the secret knowledge Ali told to, uh, a Prophet told to Ali, we have this in our tariqah, and we're not allowed to disclose it, else we will be killed. But this is what they believe, you see. They believe, Wahdatul Wujud, you see, La Mawjuda Illa Allah. And the, the, what I quoted at the beginning, Darulum Deoband, Allah Har Chiz Me Mojud Hai, Allah Har Jaga Mojud Hai, He's present everywhere. And Har Chiz Me, He's present in everything. So, I mean, this is Wahdatul Wujud, they're spreading these books openly, they're not even hiding. Fusus al Hikam is clear, anybody can look it online. It's people who worship idols, they, 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 they only worship Allah, so. And with that, we'll end the say Jazakallah khair to Ali Hassan Khan. Inshallah, we'll do a part two to this lecture sometime in the early part of the new year.